there we go. What is going on, everyone? I hope I didn't alarm any of you who are simply jamming out to the tunes that we have playing right now. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Sunday, as always. <coughs> Excuse me, holy cow. Hope everyone's doing well. Yes, yes, we have the pink shirt tonight. I enjoy this shirt very much, so I need to find more that are of this... Uh, this gradient. It's a, a very beautiful color on me. Take a look at all your comments. Thank you to everyone who took the time to be in here tonight. We have a interesting and also very relaxing show. We got uh, Pat the Reseller, uh, President and Accounted for as always. Tap Doctor, good to see you. Long time no see, buddy. I don't know if you if you caught up on the uh, international uh, reseller drama. Fortunately, I've kind of fallen out of favor with some of the UK presence, but uh, I'm happy as always to see you here within my chat this evening. Uh, we actually have some UK expansion stuff rolling out right now with uh, Prairie Grit too, so you may want to reach out to me. I sent out a message to uh, Andrew as well as Crystal. Uh, so if you're interested in doing some work with us, just send me a message and uh, it'll be good for anyone's channel or social media presence over there right now. Hello to FGS, uh, Mindy as well. Pleasure for you, uh, a pleasure to have you guys here. I see Leah here. Haven't seen you in the chat in a little bit. Happy to have you back. And if I have missed you, I apologize. A little bit of talk about macrame. Good stuff. Future Fortunes, Robert. Always happy to have you here. Thank you for tuning in tonight. What was I doing? I was doing something earlier where I was thinking about you. Oh, I was on uh, Patreon. I was looking at the back end. And you were our only new sign-up over this last 21 days. We lost two people. We lost uh, Corey. Uh, you know, like I said, we little uh, difference uh, exchange of words there and then we also lost Okami. Okami has been with us probably one of our longest patrons. I think she was the third person to ever sign up and she has been a patron for so long she was still on the five dollar tier when she dropped her membership just recently. I think she'd been a patron for over three years now so uh, thank you to her for sticking around for so long and uh, thank you to Robert for picking it up this month. Robert you're gonna be very excited we actually have a new perk for our patrons that we're gonna be rolling out tonight officially i just closed the deal on it so that way we can offer even more value to our patrons it's one of those things too where if you're not a patron gosh by the end of this show you're going to be missing out because there's just so so much so much value in the program now it's kind of like a no-brainer but we'll talk about that later um yeah robert fenton futures over here robert if you, those of you who don't know uh, stumbled into one of the largest uh, scores of Fenton I have ever seen. One of the largest that Mindy has ever seen, and Mindy's been working with Fenton forever now. And uh, yeah, it's quite a pile. I even told him, I said, tell them I'm a broker, have them call me, I'll handle the negotiations, I'll send you the money, close the deal on the entire pile, and we'll just sort it out later. Uh, Tat Doctor says, I wasn't aware of any issues, but happy to be here. I'm due to catch up with Christos. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'll, I'll just keep it uh, basic. I made some colorful comments regarding a video that uh, someone was made, and I explained to them that the things in the video were inaccurate and could cause people to destroy their products by attempting to repair or service them in that manner. And he said that it was basically his opinion. And I said, well, you know, you should put the caveat that it can destroy people's stuff. You know, he's like, well, I didn't want to go into that much detail. I'm like, well, it, sh it should be explained. But I, I was really colorful about how I went about it. I was, I was an immature uh, guy about it. But it's just something, you know, you'll learn it in time. You'll learn how to uh, just kind of work through it. Uh, but we just had a little bit of a difference of opinion and in process, which I can respect. You know, each of their own. Uh, Sophia! I'm not sure who you are. I see you got a basic avatar, but here I'll give you the I'll give you the wave right back. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Happy to have you. Tonight's going to be a very interesting night, especially for those of you who aren't going to be attending eBay Open. Uh, there's there, you're going to have the opportunity to vote tonight on where you would like me to go. So we have a lot of announcements for eBay Open tonight. We have uh, we have access to the full agenda of all the events that are going to be happening at eBay Open, and there's a lot to talk about regarding that too. There, they, I don't know, I kind of feel like a little bit of bait and switch happened as far as what I was being sold when I signed up for eBay Open and then what's actually being presented to me. So it's going to be very interesting. Look at all the lovely welcomes for our newest guest. Uh, Redneckerson Resale says, bought me a vintage Zippo yesterday, but really don't know how to look it up. 
Well, uh, start with the design. Uh, we have a training video within our uh, uh, one of the playlists. I think it says the like official training videos, and it says how to price your items, maximizing profits and margins. If you haven't seen that, I'd suggest you watch it, and it'll kind of give you the basic fundamentals of how to look up any item and how to go about pricing any item. And uh, you know, it's kind of crazy too that after the time I finished that video, there's been changes within eBay, and now if you're an eBay seller with a store. You get access to TerraPeak, which will give you historical pricing data a year back. So that's kind of a nice thing if you're if you need more information as well. But if you're still stumped, don't be afraid to post it to the group. Ask for some help, uh, you know, or, or uh, reach out to us uh, via Patreon or directly through. You're Pam's daughter. Okay, I know who you are. Pam is a. Uh, uh, I've seen some of your the, the post, the social media post. Thank you for your service. I greatly appreciate it. If if that's the right daughter, if it's the other daughter, then. Um, cool gaming setup so uh yes mindy also uh seconded that thought she said send a picture to the bolo group we can help we certainly can we love looking up items believe it or not we love finding uh information on cool pieces i'm gonna go ahead and double check the air before the show gets started guys i want to make sure it's nice and cool while i'm in here give me a second So, Sophiel, I need to know which daughter you are. It's imperative to the production. Red Neckerson Resale says, thank you, Jay, for being real. I appreciate that. You know, I've gotten some messages lately. I talk with somebody in the DMs, and, I, you know, apologies for not remembering who you are. And, and I'm not saying that like some pompous, you know, a-hole who's like, I get so many messages, I can't remember who I talk to. It's just, it's been a very chaotic week, to say the least. Uh, a lot of preparation, a lot of adjustments, a lot of personal stuff happening in my life as well. It's just been a bit of a heavy week for me. Uh, but somebody had sent me a message uh, just saying like, you know, hey, we've watched a lot of YouTube creators and we've decided that you're gonna be one of the few that we're gonna continue to watch. And that really meant a lot to me, it really did. And I've, I've heard that word real or, you know, honest uh, be thrown around regarding me a few times. And uh, it always means a lot to me. So thank you for saying that. I do appreciate it. And thank you for being a real supporter of my show. We have some, we have some fakers out there, believe it or not. Look at that. You're already getting help in the comments. I love you guys. You came because you heard about a killer Fenton score. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta jump into the group chat. And honestly, uh, you know, Pam, if you want, just go ahead and drop her in. That's fine with me. We'll be happy to extend that gratuity to you for all that you do. We'll be happy to drop her in and uh, share that with her. It's the gamer daughter. Yeah, you have a cool setup. I need to talk with somebody about a new PC as well. So if you want to send me some pointers, I'm going to be switching from streaming on a Mac, which I'm doing right now. I know it's disgusting, uh, to a standard PC. And I need something that's going to be able to... I guess handle everything that I want to do, because even as of right now, if I was to click that start recording button while I stream in 1080 and try and record at 1080, it's just not going to happen. And even when I use OBS to try and record a video, if I have my mic mounted like this, everything's fine if I'm stationary. But if I get up and I start moving around, my computer, I can tell the computer's working harder to, you know, I guess minimize bitrate usage. But as I move more and I'm carrying a mic with me, I start getting crackling and popping because I can't keep up with everything that's happening. So I'm due for an upgrade, basically, is what I'm saying. Tat Doctor says, Jay, two-part random question. Are you a James Bond fan? Thoughts on new Lady Bond? This is new news to me that we have a Lady Bond.
I've got to, I've got to get some more. Uh, oh, I love this song so much. I talked with the creator of this song and asked him if I could buy it. Um, yeah, I know, I know. You know the reason I'm using a Mac? It's because I I wanted Final Cut Pro. And when you see the multi-editor functionality with it, I can basically take five streams of video, five streams of audio, completely separate channel, drop them in, have it auto-sync, and then toggle between them as they all play at the same time and just boop, 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 and it does all the cuts and splits for me. So when you're doing a two-hour podcast with four people, to be able to generate a two-hour file on the back end, that could take 20, 30 hours. But with a tool like that, I was able to bring it down to about four to six, which was, it paid for itself immediately. And it's a it's somewhat powerful machine for what it is. But, uh, and sorry, Tat Doctor, back around to you again. Uh, I, I do like James Bond. I'm more of a Mission Impossible fan myself, but I will look into this Lady Bond. Don't be afraid to send me information on that. I'm curious now. Hopefully it's not like that whole Ocean's 8 thing that happened with the all-female cast or even the Ghostbusters thing. Because here's the thing, okay? I got no problem with women playing lead roles in movies, but I don't understand. Like, here's the thing, okay? You're talking about women, they want to be independent, they want to have them shine and stand apart from their male counterparts within cinema. Why are we taking the name and the brand identity that was uh, historically known for being a male-dominated field and then feeling like we have to turn that into a, a female one. Why not give them their own original, you know, we could have our own female heist series movies, our own James Bond-esque type movies with their own female, you know, female characters. There's no reason to ride on the coattails, you know, they, they can, they can definitely stand up and represent their own brand themselves. Mindy's saying, let's rock this show. I guess we don't really have a choice in the matter. Uh, seeing as how Mindy said so, let's go ahead and uh, let's do this. <laughs> What is going on, guys? This is Jay Craft with the Facebook group All Around Pickers Lounge coming at you live again from beautiful Bakersfield, California. Today is July 21st, 2019, <clears throat> and the air quality is horrible today. You're going to have to forgive me. We have a huge show in store for you today. First and foremost, thank you to everyone who took the time to be here tonight. We have a lot of brand new faces, and I know why you're here. We're going to be talking about eBay Open, and we're going to be doing comprehensive coverage on every single event that they're going to be doing. We're going to talk about them all today in very brief detail because there's a lot to go through. And guess what? Starting at 5.30 p.m. tonight on our Facebook group, you will get the opportunity to vote where I will be for the entirety of eBay Open. I won't be choosing what events I go to. You will be choosing. You, the fans, because I'm not going for me. I'm going for you. And as much as I appreciate the warm wishes and everyone saying go and have some fun... It's going to be a lot of work, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. On top of that, guys, I have a wonderful gift box here from Mindy. It's a large box. We're going to be cracking that open and taking a look at it. Thank you to anyone who sends me stuff. It's always a, a lovely surprise. We have some massive changes happening to our Patreon program, where if you weren't a patron before and you said, Jay, I really don't see the value there, I'm going to be upset at you after tonight if you can't see the reason to sign up and be a part of what we're doing. On top of that, we have one final bin of items, which admittedly has been here for over a month that I haven't even started listing because I've been waiting to show you. So we're gonna tear through that. And I don't want you to think that just because eBay Open is around the corner that I would have forgotten those of you, including Rachel, who are here specifically for the news this evening. We're gonna be talking about the eBay shareholder call and why for the first time ever, I actually smiled at some of the answers that I heard. It was a decent call. You're gonna have to bear with me though. It just dawned on me right now that I forgot to highlight those notes. So we're gonna kind of chunk through it a little bit. Uh, if you missed out on last week's show, guys, we had a ton of pickups from our estate sale. Uh, we talked a little bit about eBay open prep. And if you have any questions regarding that tonight, don't be afraid to ask. This is a live Q and A. Drop your questions in the comments and we will get to them. On top of that, we talked about Etsy's push to free shipping and how your listings are gonna get suppressed if you're not offering it. And we talked about eBay's hack day as well as very important laws that got changed last Tuesday for California sellers, which could set precedent for other states in the future. Go watch last week's show if you missed it. 
If you haven't realized, we haven't been doing Wednesday uploads lately. I've just been a little bit too busy with eBay opening all of that stuff, the prep and the purchases, and I've got... Guys, you won't believe the amount of gear that I need to bring with me to make it happen. It's going to be a huge, huge ordeal, but it's going to happen. Uh, I want to say thank you and welcome again to everyone here. We got Matthew Eason in the crowd, haven't seen you in forever. Welcome and thank you to both of our moderators, Mindy and Pam, for assisting this evening and making sure that nobody causes any problems. We also got Lisa C. Sophiel, which is uh, Pam's daughter, Red Neckerson resells. We got and Pat, always president and accounted for. So thank you to you guys for being here. Without further ado, let's head over to our news bit. Uh, guys, I do want to point out that this total up here is incorrect. We actually have about another $200 more, but believe it or not, there is no way that I could find to manually adjust this number. It's ran through stream labels. I couldn't do a character command within stream labels to update it. I couldn't go in and update the text file that it's reading from. There was just no way to do it. So this number is about $200 off. We're at about $1,336.99 uh, towards our 3K goal. And if you guys are wondering why it's so darn expensive, we had to buy quite a bit of stuff to make this happen. Little things that you wouldn't think about. Stuff that I have here... Um, Stuff like this, okay? This is a $20 cable. Um, this is gonna allow me to get much further away from my computer. Uh, it's like a male to female USB 3.0 with a booster on it. And right here in this setup where I'm at right now, I can have my camera right in front of me. It's a nice camera. But when I'm doing the studio setup at eBay Open, I need that camera 15 feet away from me, maybe 20 feet away from me, and I wanna be able to have the computer right next to me, so that way I'm able to control things and read questions and all of that stuff as well. So little logistical things, and but when you put stuff further away, well, guess what? Now you need longer cables for the video, now you need longer cables for the power, and then you're gonna need a power strip, and then you're probably gonna to need to have that further away as well. And then you have your audio equipment that you're gonna need further away, and then all the cables to run that. So that's partly why things have gotten so expensive. We're probably about, I want to say conservatively, uh, maybe about $2,000 in on equipment. And we've reduced the length of the trip to try and accommodate the budget that we're working with. Uh, the hotel cost, believe it or not, was roughly $980 for a four-night stay. And we brought that down to a three-night stay, which brought our cost down to $752. And then we have the, the car storage. It's like 50 bucks to leave the car there. And then I've used a bunch of comps to be able to reduce food cost and everything else. But... All things said and done, we are certainly going to break our three grand uh, uh, expected cost to be able to pull this off. But like I said, this is what we need to do to make this happen so I can provide you guys with the news. First and foremost, thank you to all our patrons for making this show possible. An extra special thank you to Pam, Mathley, Ma Ma Pam Matthew, Ashley, Anna and Joe, Allie, Lee James, Brandy and Rob, and a extra special Thank you and goodbye to two patrons who left us recently. Okami, who's one of our longest patrons ever. I think she was the third person to sign up, as well as Corey, who had stuck around for well over a year. Thank you to the two of you guys uh, for the time that you did spend here. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, moving onward, though, onward and upward, it would be really nice if that button worked. There we go, guys. We're going to do the full agenda breakdown with you today. Now, I've gone ahead and printed mine out. If any of you guys would like to follow along, the link is going to be available within our Facebook group, facebook.com backslash groups, backslash, uh, I think it's Pickers Lounge. I think that's the correct one. You can head over to that group and you can uh, uh, get the link to be able to follow along with the agenda that we're looking at today. Or you can just type in eBay Open Agenda on uh, any Google search to be able to pull it up for you. Now, the way that they have this event outlined, those of you who are getting there on Monday are gonna be able to register between 12 to five, and those of you getting there on Tuesday are gonna be able to register between eight and 12. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, Originally, I was set to get there Monday. Due to budget cutbacks, I went ahead and pushed it over to Tuesday because I just didn't see much value in taking a personal day before we got set up there. Hello, Tia Susan. Hello, Tia Aaron. So I'll be leaving uh, Tuesday, and I'll probably get there around 1 o'clock, even though I know registration's till noon. I'm sure they're going to let me register still, but I'm going to try and make it happen. 
Uh, now, the Tuesday, even if you aren't going, this is important stuff to know, uh, you know, because the thing is, I'm going to be doing a lot of live coverage from there. So you can expect a couple of streams, even on Tuesday, even though there's not a whole lot happening. They're going to have a couple of meet and greet events. And if you'd like me to stream from the actual event, I can do that. I can bring a camera with me, but we might not have as many of the finished, uh, polished elements that like you see here. But it's certainly something that can happen. And they're going to have a pop-up that's uh, regarding accelerating your growth. And then they're going to have a little thing. It's called Seller Pictionary, which is a networking event to try and meet up with other people. So if you are there on Tuesday, it's going to be a very relaxed day. If you're one of those people who said, you know what, I'm not sure if I'm going to be going Tuesday or Wednesday, and you still have that flexibility, if you want to save a bit of money, go ahead and show up on Wednesday. That's my personal take on it. If you have a vested interest in getting there early because you have some setup, whether you're doing some media coverage, filming coverage, networking purposes, Tuesday will be fine. And if you're like some, there's some people who are there already, which I find will be a little bit shocking. They're just taking an extended vacation is what they're doing. Now, coming into the Wednesday, you'll see the way that they've done these events, and I know this is so chintzy looking the way that I'm doing this, but the way they've done this event is they have it set up to where multiple things are happening at one time. Like especially, you can see situations here where we have seven or eight different panels all happening at one time, okay? And it's really frustrating to be completely honest with you. I wish that there was a more uh, direct flow with how things were going to be happening. So when you go to the Facebook group today, starting at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time and going up till 5.40, Every minute a new poll is going to be added, and those polls are going to stay there until pretty much Tuesday. And you'll get the opportunity to vote on each and every time slot for what event you'd like me to go to. You'll see that some events are going to be repeated, so if you go through the poll and you see multiple events that have the same, or the multiple time slots that have the same exact event, don't click on the same one in multiple ones, click on different ones that you have an interest in seeing. Now there is an event that is occurring that's a single time run. And with that event, I might just go ahead and veto and go ahead and run and do that one. But I really want to give everyone who's been watching, who has been supporting the power to decide where I go. And if there's an outcry from patrons and where you guys would like specifically for me to go to something and uh, it doesn't win the vote, let me know. We'll make it happen. Uh, you know, we can scoot some stuff around or maybe I can ask somebody to go to an event, bring a camera with them and then give me a playback later. Now, as far as what we are going to be able to do at eBay Open, <clears throat> I did everything in my power to try and establish the correct contacts to be able to get full media coverage there. It comes to me with a, a great uh, level <laughs> of uh, frustration that we weren't able to connect the dots. Now, partly that, that, that's going to be symptomatic of some of the negative things that I've said about eBay in the past. <clears throat> to be quite frank, I even spoke with the Retail Revival program, and you guys, some of you saw the trailer for my eBay Revealed Part 2, where I was really taking hard jabs at them, and we got them on the phone. <clears throat> Excuse me. We got them on the phone, and we spoke with them about what was going on, and said, you know, hey, there's certain things that are happening with the Retail Revival program that don't necessarily seem congruent with what you're saying to the public, or what you're saying to the mayor, or yada, yada, yada. And we would really like an opportunity to be able to speak with you and kind of get your side as far as what's going on before we publish this piece. And they went and did a little bit of research on me. And, I'm, of course, they found the video and the angle at which it was being p pitched. And I said, I would really like to give eBay the chance to, you know, uh, explain more of what was going on. They said, you know, hey, we'll definitely follow up with you. You know, we just needed to speak with our team, see what's going on. They messaged back and they said, you know, hey, you know, this isn't about, eBay, you know, retail revival. That's what this, this is not what this event is about. Uh, so we're, we're at this time, we're going to have to decline. I said, OK. And at first they were very curious as far as when my piece was going to be coming out. When's it coming out? When's it coming out? When's it coming out? And I intentionally did not publish anything because I really wanted to give them the opportunity to respond. And now that they're not, I can guarantee you that coming into next month, we are going to produce and release that piece. And it's gonna look really bad. And it's not my goal, but my goal is to tell everyone the truth and to dig up the stuff that nobody else is willing to dig up. That being said, I also reached out to the S-Band team, the Small Business Ambassadors Network, and I do have a uh, non-formal arrangement to be able to get them on camera to speak with them regarding the current state of tax laws here in America and expectations of what is going to be coming in the future. We're either going to be interviewing them on the show floor or we're going to be having them come up to our studio in the Skybox Suite. If you're going to be at the event 
and you'd like to sit down and just talk with me about eBay or talk with me about being a reseller on air, reach out to me, okay? We have a couple of evenings where we're just going to be sitting there and having a little after hours discussion, having a good old talk about eBay and reselling and all that. And if you want to come relax, we'd be happy to sit down and speak with you too. And if you're an influencer, more the merrier. That'd be great. You can set up your own camera. You can do a dual stream. That's fine with us too. But we have this very special S-Band uh, meeting. And then I'll also be doing a S-Band after hours, uh, after party type of thing. It's like a uh, invite only special mixer that I'll be at as well. And I don't think anyone has ever filmed at one of those before. So I'll be very excited to get some uh, interesting footage and I guess get a very fresh perspective that hasn't been shown online before. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, and I don't think we have anything else super, super planned so far for the event. But who knows what's going to happen. It's going to be a very, very interesting time. So guys, we're going to talk about some of the panels. Now, I'm going to be reading the information regarding the panels that I pulled directly from the agenda site. And I do want to let you know, I have not read any of this yet. And the reason I didn't read any of it is because I want to give you my genuine thoughts and genuine feedback and response regarding uh, the events and the panels. I thought it would be fun so you could see my perspective in real time. So the first one is a seller panel. It says access a wealth of selling knowledge on social media. And the description, this is going to be run by Doug Smith, who's a community content manager. I'm not even sure what that really means. I don't know if that means that they run like the, the back-end help or what. And it says this one, uh, sellers are the experts in selling always, but how do you tap into this valuable resource? On community and social media, hear from a dynamic panel of sellers who spend their days sharing invaluable tips and advice for successful selling on eBay. That really tells me nothing. Um... I don't know. I have issues with social media marketing where you can't see a direct correlation between the actions that you're doing and then uh, attributable sales volume numbers. And I don't believe eBay has the tools in place to really be able to uh, prove the viability of any level of advertising outside of the platform. The next one, and remember, these are all ones that you're going to be able to vote for. So if you hear one that sounds interesting to you, just go ahead and jot it down, and then you'll be able to do the voting starting at 530. Seller panel, hear how fashion sellers dress for success. Dress for success takes on a new meaning when sellers in clothing, shoes, and accessories and jewelry watches take the stage. Part panel discussion, part Q&A. Come hear industry trends and expert advice from those in the know. Being ran by Renee Paradise, a senior direct director of fashion on eBay. It's an interesting title. Uh, yeah, so some of these events are set up as Q&As. And other events that are being set up are uh, simply speaking presentations. And I believe all the ones that we're going to be talking about right now, these seller panels, are going to be ones that include Q&A. Next one up is seller panel. Collect tips for success from fellow collectible sellers. With 50 plus categories of collectibles, successful sellers are always looking for fresh insight into what motivates hobbyists and collectors of all stripes to add to their collection. Take advantage of experience from your colleagues in this interactive panel session. I expect there to be uh, visual aids or something along that, uh, along those lines included with that. It's gonna be run by Gordon Chang and Steve Halupka, who are category managers and senior managers respectively. The next one up says seller panel, get amped up to get tips and tricks from sellers in hard goods. What's hot and what's not in electronics, business and industrial and parts and accessories. This panel of your peers share their success strategies and take your questions so you can increase your sales in these vital categories. Gear up! And this is from Jordan Hentinga, Senior Director, eBay Motor Parts and Accessories. That's a weird, weird uh, thing. Um, do we have a motor parts and accessories specialist running this panel? regarding electronics, business, industrial, and parts and accessories. You know, this is somewhat concerning to me uh, that the people who are having these panels and discussions regarding what people should be selling are the ones who are working for eBay and not necessarily the ones who are out actually sourcing and closing deals with brands. Because it, it doesn't take much effort to go onto eBay and figure out what's actually worth money. I mean, price plus shipping highest first, and you can sort by category. But I really don't understand the value of having an eBay representative tell me that information. You know who I'd want telling me that information? Category leaders in sales. I'd want somebody who's been doing, uh, you know, the, the, the specific category of electronics, business, industrial parts, and accessories for the last 15, 20 years, who has contacts, who has experience, who has this, that, and the other, telling me 
what I should be looking for within those categories. Uh, next one up, uh, being run by Dominique Holland, senior mark, excuse me, senior manager and marketplace diversity. Seller panel: Women-owned eBay businesses. Did you know that? Women own nearly 40% of all privately held U.S. businesses. We've invited several women with thriving businesses on eBay to share their amazing stories. Now, here's a question for you, okay? Why is that statistic phrased in that way? Did anyone else catch that? Did you know women own nearly 40% of all privately held U.S. businesses? Why aren't they giving the eBay statistic, okay? Because as far as I knew, there was a large number of female eBay sellers, but Something leads me to believe that they're intentionally not giving that information because the number is probably going to be lower than that. And they also said nearly. So it's probably like 36 or 37 percent. Uh, Red Neckerson resells two dollar and 22 cents super chat. Thank you so much for that. Says for down payment on the 18 dollar omelet at Mandalay. That is so nice of you to think that I'm going to be able to afford an 18 dollar omelet at Mandalay Bay. That is simply not happening. I uh, <laughs> I have this app on my phone that allows me to get comps, and uh, it's a slot app. It's a great one. I played it for years, and I half of my meals are going to come from eBay, and the other half of my meals are going to be coming from my comps. And then I told Miguel that I would go to I think it's called Mirakek. Uh, it's a it's some type of special restaurant. Uh, also, those of you who are watching who want to do this this meet and greet, and you guys want to meet with me. If, I, I, two things, okay? One, if you see me on the convention floor, I will not recognize you. I apologize, okay? I'll know what your name is if you tell me. If you show me our chat log, I'll remember everything that we've ever said to each other. Until I see your profile picture, because none of you look like your profile picture. You know what I'm talking about. You got pictures of your kittens, pictures of your kids. You guys got all these pi you got pictures from the 80s, okay? When I meet you, Show me your profile picture, then I'll know exactly who I'm talking to. But if you come up and you say, Jay, it's so nice to meet you, and you try and give me a hug, I'm 99% I'm chance I'm not going to know who you are, okay? So <laughs> that being said, uh, just bear with me. And number two, if you'd like to join me for this dinner and you'd like to be a part of it, send me a message beforehand. It'll probably happen Tuesday night, maybe Maybe, maybe Wednesday night. It might be a late dinner. I don't know. The schedule's really tight. So, and yes, Leah, you're, you're the, specifically who I'm speaking to. No, I don't know. But that's what I'm saying, guys. If I don't know who you are, like, on a, like if we haven't talked on the phone especially, it's going to be a little bit tricky. But thank you again for that Red Neckerson resale. I will put that, I'll probably get about $1.70 of that after YouTube takes their tiny cut, and I will put that towards... A, a, a mediocre snack from the vending machine. Uh, <laughs> what's what's in an eighteen dollar omelet? I want to know what a five dollar milkshake tastes like. That's what I want to know. What's up, Land Shark? How you doing this evening? We're talking everything eBay open right now. <clears throat> so yeah, like I was saying, if you guys want me to go to women-owned eBay businesses, just let me know and I'll show up to that event. I got no qualms about that. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. It'll be an interesting one. Uh, the next one, how to grow your business on social media, which is slightly different than the last one we were talking about. It said, did you know that you can connect with buyers on social media and take them straight to your eBay listings? Learn best practices from top sellers, Facebook and Instagram experts on how social media marketing can take your business to the next level. This is going to be ran by Audrey Tracy, who's a content strategist. Now, here's the thing. I would just love to talk with her. I would just love to pick her ear as a content strategist and, and have her tell me what she feels is the driving force for people to be able to generate real attributable sales. And, and if there is tools in place that we can use to really uh, not only scale, but to be able to track, that would be an event that I would probably be interested in going to. But like I said, you guys are going to be voting. Uh, polls open here in seven minutes on which events you would like us to go to. Uh, and, and excuse me, I said earlier that I belie believed all of those ones had Q&A, only select ones had Q&As. These next ones, these are eBay speakers, and these are going to have Q&As with them. It says, operating and managed payments, join us if you are already signed up to learn the latest and influence what's coming. I highly doubt that anyone going to this event is going to have any influence on the future of managed payment, but it certainly is a nice notion to be able to give people. So join us as we go deeper on the experience today, including new ways for buyers to pay with PayPal and Google Pay, and features like seller-initiated refunds, unique order IDs, 
APIs, and more. Learn what's coming soon and share your thoughts on what you'd like to see next. Here's the issue with all of this, okay? This is already done. This is, this is already good to go. We have PayPal, we have Google Pay, if you're, you know, it's already established. Uh, Seller-initiated refunds were talked about on a seller update, two, two seller updates ago. Was that the spring one? It was a while back. And then uh, unique order IDs, that's already done. We learned about that in the last seller update. APIs, which applies to essentially nobody, unless you're a developer, unless you're somebody working on the, uh, the, the back end, the tech end of things, APIs mean nothing to most people. And then uh, share your thoughts on what you'd like to see next. That's really the only value that I see there. Landshark Picker says, I'm curious to see what they say about managed payments. I've heard nothing positive about it. Yeah, the, the reason why you haven't heard anything positive about it is because there's really nothing positive to say. Uh, unfortunately, those who are on managed payments have seen a severe dip in sales. There's very few select people who uh, have seen an uptick. And I'm not going to lie, I think that the only way that the people who are on managed payments currently have any level of success is because they have to be getting priority ranking within the site. But now that we have these new California laws in place that we talked about last week, it's going to force brands like eBay to offer more transparency regarding how their search algorithm, Cassini, actually works. And once we have that type of information, we can make more informed decisions about work, what we're going to be doing next. I have no interest in learning more about managed payments, but if you'd like me to go, you might want me to go to this next panel that they're going to be doing, titled Considered Managing P Managed Payments? Question mark. Join us if you've been invited and want to learn about the current experience. Have you received an invite to manage payments? Then we are ready for your business. Join us to learn more about managed payments and what it means to you, new ways for buyers to pay, consolidated reporting and fees, and getting everything you need to sell and get paid all on eBay. Learn about how managed payments works and why it's right for you. So if you'd like me to attend that one, go ahead and drop your vote in for that one as well. I'm being asked, does Pat look like Trump? No, Pat looks like, well, Pat looks like Pat. Here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to visit Pat's channel really quick. And I know this is exceptionally unprofessional for those of you who are watching this live right now. Oh, I totally see it. Yeah. I'm blown away. Pat has uh, 49 subscribers. Oh, wow. He actually, oh, he has a lot of liked videos, but I don't think he has any, uh, any uploads. Back to the main event. Next one up. This is, a, I, I think it may be an important panel being run by Gary Fulmer, Senior Director of Trust, and Chris Bre Bremser, Senior Manager of Seller Protections. Uh, this one's titled Seller Protections. eBay has your back with a range of protections for issues that range from protecting against abusive bullying activity to and shipment delays. Come hear details about how we've improved our seller protection programs and learn the steps to take to protect your business. Now, here's the thing. I'm all fine and dandy and uh, all on board about being able to protect sellers just a little bit more. But the problem is, is there's a massive disconnect between what eBay says and what the representatives on the phone actually hear. I've called reps on the phone and I've quoted verbatim stuff from the terms of service the, or the recent seller updates. They have no clue about it. And our ability to be protected is only going to be as good as the people that are put in charge of actually protecting us. So if I go to that, you can better believe that those are some of the questions I'm going to ask for them is why is there such a strong disconnect with that? Next one is boost your business with Terapeak Insight. Successful eBay sellers rely on Terapeak Research, competitive listing insight to help boost their business. Terapeak is available for free for most store subscription tiers, basic and beyond. Don't miss this opportunity to learn how to leverage this business building platform to grow your sales. This will be ran by a senior product manager for seller experience, or two of them, excuse me, Adi and Luke Han. So, and Landshark says there's no seller protection anymore. You know, there is, but uh, we have to fight really hard for it. And here's the other thing. I want to I double back on one uh, a second ago. I just had a thought come back to me again. On this one that says how to grow your social media, my question is, is, is how many of the people that they are working with or some of the strategies that they're talking about, how many of those are one-off items? Are we talking about helping people out who are buying directly from vendors or possibly even doing drop shipping the way that eBay approves? How much of that help is really valuable for those of us who are selling one item at a time? Something to think about. Guys, we are uh, 30 minutes into the show. We have 40 people watching, and I just must know why haven't 
Why hasn't everyone hit the like button yet? We even got some really delicious dislikes tonight, too. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, smack that like button, help us out. And if it's your first time here, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to need to subscribe. We're going to be doing a lot of random streams over the next three days while we are at actual eBay open. We're going to be streaming directly from the show floor, and then we're going to be doing some after-hour streams as well. I don't know how late they're going to run because some of these panels start at 7, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, and I, I'm not going to miss any of them. Trust me. And, and the thing is, I don't even think I'm going to drink. I don't even think I'm going to have time to gamble. I'm just going there for work right now. So let's get this bad boy done. Show some support. Help a boy out a little bit. Okay. But uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who's uh, subbing and liking. I do appreciate it. The next one up says, turn sales into impact with eBay for charity. Have you guys ever done one of those? Have you ever uh, ran a listing and you did a charitable donation attached to it? It says, to date, the eBay community has raised nearly $912 million for charity via the amazing eBay for Charity program. Learn how you and your buyers can support the cause you care about as you grow your business. You know, here's a great thing. You want to help out charity. I, I tell you, it's the easiest thing in the world for them to be able to do. I don't know why they haven't done this yet. Pick any charity. Okay, this is one of those things. I could go to Hack Day and I could blow their mind with some of these ideas. Pick any damn charity. Okay, let's say St. Jude. And eBay can say, hey, we want to help St. Jude. You want to get your sales. I'll tell you what, list an item, okay? And we'll donate 100% of the seller fees. We'll, we'll, we'll give them 10% of whatever your item sells for, and we'll just waive your seller fees, okay? And boom, there you go. You can literally help any charity make millions of dollars, and all eBay has to do is kind of sidestep for a moment, and you inspire millions of people to use that charity option for the first time ever. Just say, hey, all you got to do is check that box. If you sell an item during the month of June, okay, we'll, we'll donate the money straight to them, you know, th via that option. And you get people engaged and starting to use the option for the first time. It really wouldn't even be that difficult. Oh, yeah. No, Pat said right now it says it's taken him forever to set up a nonprofit on eBay to take donations, even though through Valiant Heart Communities Foundation is a 501c3. Check out uh, Pat's uh, charitable cause if you haven't done so yet. And, you know, the thing is, the process of getting a 5013 is, is one of the most tedious ones ever, especially the state that you're in. You know, uh, I found that trying to apply for one here was a bit of a nightmare. But yeah, getting eBay to do anything other than the standard. If you have to call somebody that isn't in India, and I really mean that. If you're calling somebody, you need to talk to somebody domestically here in the States. It's a nightmare. And if you're calling and you have bad news, it's even worse. Okay? They just don't want to help out. They don't want to be a part of it right now. Uh, the next one up is let Seller Hub work for you. It says Seller Hub is packed with info, tools, tips, and tricks that make it easier to efficiently manage your business and increase your sales. Expect how-tos on customizing your active listings page, promoting your listings, leveraging some unique selling features, automating and downloading your orders to fulfillment and record keeping that I'm going to be honest. That sounds absolutely worthless. Um, you can kind of poke around and figure out how the seller hub works for you. If that one gets voted all the way up, I, I don't want to go, but I will go, but I don't think we need that at all. Um, that's something that I could make a video on in, in an hour and save us all the trouble. Uh, it says, to, and like I said, I haven't read any of these yet. So this is all brand new to me. Uh, tools to increase your conversion. Which tools help sellers turn watchers into buyers? Join us and, there's a typo here, join us and learn how volume pricing, send offers to buyer, best offer enhancements, and other tools can help translate website traffic into bona fide sales. We already know this. I've taught you guys about that as well. We talked about that the moment that the seller update came out, about how you can use those to uh, positively impact your sales. Again, not a thing that we need to go to, but if you want me to, I will. Create listings. This is a cool one here. Very cool one. And we're going to have to talk about this uh, thing twice, believe it or not. It says, create listings that show up in Google Shopping. If you'd like to help your listings show up in Google Shopping, this is a must-attend session. You'll hear directly from Google experts on how to optimize your listings for Google Shopping and Google Search. Plus, you'll learn how to list and title your products specifically to attract eBay buyers. This is going to be ran by... Mike Kinney, Michael Wong, Corey Wersner, who are our shopping technical specialists, senior account executives uh, with Google, as well as paid search marketing senior manager Greg Williams. This is a rock star panel of people to get an opportunity to go meet and listen to. This is probably one of the most valuable events that's going to be happening at eBay Open. This is a must 
attend event if you're going to be at eBay just for the opportunity to talk with them. Why this is so important right now is because during eBay's shareholder call, the same concerns that were echoed by a lot of eBay uh, you know, entrepreneurs, people who are very passionate about the subject of eBay, had to do with the fact that Google adjusted their algorithm uh, very recently within the last couple of weeks, and it's been shown that it's had a negative impact on eBay listings within search. So by being able to talk with them and say, hey, this is what we changed. This is why your listings aren't showing up. This is what you're going to need to do if you want your listings to show up. It's very important. Last time I checked, somewhere in the area of 40% of my sales came through Google. So if I lose one of my most valuable branches of diversification, which is Google search, I need to know what I need to do to get it back. So this is a must attend event if you are going to be going. Uh, it's very important. Uh, Leah says, I already picked the listing search event will be there. Leah, let me know which time slot you're doing because a lot of these things are uh, movable and I'll be happy to go with you. We can sit down, we can view the event together. I think that'd be a great time. <coughs> and like I said, this one is a, <coughs> excuse me, this is a uh, Q&A one. So if you have any questions too on some of these Q&A ones, let me know and uh, we'll, we'll definitely ask the questions while we're there. Next one up is optimizing your listings for discoverability and sales. It says this workshop empowers you to make use of and understand the tools and resources provi to provide complete and accurate item specifics so your products rise to the top of the shopping experience. This is, has to do with structured data. Okay, uh, If you're one of those people that runs your listings right now and you do not take the time to include item specifics, we're talking brand name, we're talking MPN when valid, uh, we're talking a year of manufacture, stuff to that effect. If you're not inputting that data into your listing, you are hurting your sales. Now, is, is it always important to do so? No. But I'll tell you, if I have 100 widgets and I have all the details for my 100 widgets, and I know that my listing will get priority placement because I spend an extra 30 seconds to a minute to input that data, I'm gonna do it, okay? So make it a point to, uh, to get that data in there if you can. I don't know how much information we can derive from it, but if you want me to go, I will. Next one, shipping tips and tools deliver what buyers want. Buyers expect more delivery options. Learn to leverage our tools and resources to make fast shipping more effective and cost and everything easier on you. Make the connection between fast, free, reliable delivery options to buyers who keep coming back. This is from Shipping Strategy and Shipping and Labels Senior Managers. Uh, it's going to be run by Dallas Roswell and Nate Hayward. I've never heard of either one of them, which is a little odd because as much as I know about the shipping industry, it might be an interesting one. Uh, you know, I'd love to ask them why they were undercutting USPS by 3% for the last six months. That would be an interesting question. But I haven't, I, I, I'll tell you right now, having fast and free shipping is important. I know this from experience this week alone. There were certain things that I purchased this week that offered faster shipping that I wouldn't have otherwise purchased. Simple as that. Uh, stack up your sales with promoted listings. Market to who it matters, when it matters, with promoted listings, the efficient and effective way to increase your exposure and help boost your sales. We'll demonstrate the easy step-by-step -step features plus several advanced features in Seller Hub. You'll also get a sneak peek at new features to come. Hmm. So if you have any questions regarding promoted listing, most of the information that you're, you're going to need is out there. I would be curious to see what's going to be coming in the future with that. The next uh, event up is, is exporting right for your business? This is another one that I've kind of had my eye on. It says, curious about going international or do you already export, but want ideas to optimize? Want to hear more about getting multinational exposure? You'll hear about the pros and cons of exporting, how to get started and garnering international exposure through our web interpret and global shipping programs. So, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not sure if I understand exactly what the web interpret is. I don't know if that's that program ran by a third party company where they get you set up with seven different countries to be able to sell out of. If it's that program, it's absurdly expensive and has no proven track record for success. Now, global shipping program, on the other hand, is pretty darn decent, especially if you live close to the export station, which I don't. The closer you live to it, the better off you are. This might be an interesting one to attend. Next one up is the Inside Scoop Q&A with eBay execs and category leadership. 
Come to this important Q&A session where you can pose questions directly to executives and vertical leaders. Gain insight on industry trends and how eBay is focused on supporting our sellers. It's going to be ran by hard goods and soft goods, uh, VPs, as well as the senior director in fashion. That was so boring that, have you ever read something and not listened to the words that you were saying? That is exactly what happened right now. I'm reading it again, and I'm still bored. Okay, the next one up, Internet Sales Tax and Tools for Sellers. It says, learn about eBay's tax obligation and how it impacts sellers and buyers alike. Come find out what types of tools and resources are available to you as a seller to help make the whole thing less dot 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 taxing. See what we did there? I see it. I see it. So, uh, you know, we've talked heavily regarding tax obligations here on the show before. And I think it goes without saying, there's a couple of different camps here that watch my show. There's the camp that says, yes, I'm going to get on my phone with my CPA first thing in the morning. We're going to figure out what we need to do to stay compliant. Okay. And the the 5% of you, congratulations for that. And then there's probably about 90% of us. Okay. You notice I said us who are saying, well, they can't get us all and we're going to see what happens. So, um, you know, and, and that's just based off what I've seen so far. Uh, just just be mindful. Some of these things we're, we're going to have to start paying a little bit more attention to here in the future as regulations start coming down harder. Uh, we might see what happened over in the EU where they are putting the onus on the brands, you know, like Amazon to ensure that their sellers are actually paying their taxes and if they aren't, they're going to start penalizing the brands or holding the brands accountable for the for those taxes. So it's going to be very interesting. So if you want me to do that, we can. But like I said, we're sitting down with the S-Ban team, the Small Business Ambassador Network, and we're going to be talking with them about tax law already. We're going to be a- able to ask questions that simply we can't ask at that event. Uh, we'll be able to ask them privately. And that's going to air separately unless we get one of them roped in for an after-hour session. We'll be editing the video. Uh, those of you who are curious, we're, we're going to record probably somewhere in the area of about 30 to 40 hours worth of footage across the few days. It's going to take <clears throat> well over a month or two to get everything processed out, but we will be releasing the videos in time on our channel. So if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe. Uh, up next, we have uh, one more event. This is a no question. It's called a Managed Payments, a Fireside Chat. Join us to learn more if you have been invited or signed up yet. So this is being ran by somebody else, apparently. It's Again, it's on managed payment. It says, interested in managed payment but haven't received an invite yet? eBay is is on a multi-year journey to roll out managed payments, and by 2021, the majority of sellers will be on managed payments. Come by to hear about the progress so far, what's new, and what's to come. This is a stupid event. And no disrespect to eBay or the person running this event. Uh, The reason why everyone isn't on managed payments yet is it has to do with the agreement that PayPal has with eBay. They simply can't sign up more people. Uh, They have limitations. We have exactly 6,000 people on managed payments right now, which uh, account for less than half a percent of all sellers. So managed payments, maybe even a quarter of a percent, it means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. No one's really on it, okay? And they can't add more people until next year. So going to an event like this seems very frustrating. It's, it seems like uh, there, there's not much that can be done. Let me look at these comments. They're going off like crazy. Mindy went on PayPal so that Jay can get the omelet, but the total is not changing. Did somebody mail it me in a donation? Yeah, I cannot manually adjust that ticker. Ursula, thank you so much for the $18. That is super nice of you. I do appreciate that. Thank you. And if you aren't plugged into our community yet, please get plugged in. But uh, that means a lot to me. It's, it's, it's going to help out. We, we have spent too much money so far, um, but it had to happen. Even stupid stuff like this. You know, okay, this is one of those things. I don't know if I prepare too much or not. Okay, so as much as I'd like to be able to wire people up to microphones while I'm out there on the floor, I'm just not going to be able to do that. So we got this microphone, and I specifically got this mic so that way people could feel comfortable holding a microphone while they're talking to me. And this is going to be plugged into a XLR cable on the bottom. It weighs a, a third of what this one weighs because I don't want to hand them something heavy. And people are very uncomfortable on camera. So I gave them, I'm getting them a microphone that they'll be able to wave around. They won't even have to talk directly at it. From Even from here, it'll catch everything that they're saying. 
Okay, so people who have never used microphones before will be able to use this, and we'll be able to talk to random people out there on the show floor. It'll be good. You know, it's an important thing to, uh, to, to actually get set up. I actually just now realized I need another short cable. My gosh, this is what I'm talking about, guys. The little things that I need to have. Let me add this to my master to-do list. Go to Guitar Center, get a short XLR cable. I have one short one, but I'm gonna need a second one. Lovely. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. Like little things like this, you're like, oh, well, you know, that's not a huge deal. Well, it's a $160 microphone. And I, you know, I know it seems a bit excessive, but you know, if the channel's gonna stick around forever, there's no sense in buying garbage now and then buying expensive stuff later, so. I will let you know exactly what an $18 omelet tastes like. And I, I, I can assure you it'll be delicious. Thank you again for that. Uh, and if you'd like to donate, we have our, uh, our information scrolling down at the bottom periodically. You can also hit that super chat button as well to help us out. And thank you to everyone who has as well. Um, but yeah, the fireside, I, you know, I don't know why they're using the phrase fireside unless they actually have a fire there. It's something that I'd seen PragerU, they have their fireside discussions and they literally have a fire fireplace there. So if that's what they do, it'll be interesting. Hopefully it'll smell like Christmas in there. Uh, and then up next, there's two panels that are being done. Uh, they're being done by sponsors, which I found to be interesting. First one is Chubb Business Betterment, which is a horrible brand name. How to Fall in Love with Your Insurance, which is a horrible name for a panel. We understand that insurance can be complicated and impersonal, but here's the thing, it does not have to be. Join us as we unravel the stigma around insurance and answer your questions. You know, I would fire whoever wrote that little brief write up. I think they could have done so much better. Uh, next one up is uh, last one. This is the last event we're gonna talk about. Pitney Bowes. You guys know who Pitney Bowes is. They make the labels for you on eBay. They're the ones behind the, uh, the the shipping process. Chubb is an INS company. I have, oh yeah, an insurance company, yeah. So uh, Pitney Bowes demystifying global shipping to help you grow your business. Join us for an engaging panel discussion as we offer sellers of all sizes insight into eBay and Pitney Bowes global shipping program. You'll hear directly from sellers about their own experience with it and get tips on how to incorporate the global shipping program to your business. What tips do you need? Like, I don't want to sound like, un again, ungrateful or, or, or snippy or anything, but multi-editor, select all, shipping options, add global shipping. That, that's literally all you need to do. So Landshark, you asked probably the best possible question that could have been asked right now. He said, is there any mention of Fulfilled by eBay? No, I've just listed off every single event to you. And this is why, frankly, I'm so upset about the whole thing. There's no mention of FFE, okay, fulfillment by eBay, which I was expecting, okay. Where is the mention of the dedicated seller app, okay? So when we signed up for eBay Open, we were provided with a list of things that uh, were things that were available to be spoken about, and we could choose the ones that were of most interest to us at the time of signing up. And there was so many different things that were mentioned on that that are just simply not mentioned in the agenda. And it really frustrates me. Because uh, like I said, it feels like a bit of a bait and switch. You know what I wanna know? I wanna know about actual changes that are coming up on the platform. My idea, my views and my beliefs coming into this event blindly, this is my first year going, is that we were gonna get to learn about new and exciting things coming to eBay, right? I mean, 90% of what I read you right now is stuff that we can learn from home. And uh, I find that frustrating. So I'm really hoping. And the, the other thing too, <clears throat> when I listened to Devin Wenig talk on the shareholder call, he said that there was going to be new reveals. <clears throat> there was gonna be new information. There was gonna be a bunch of stuff happening at the event that hasn't been mentioned before. And he mentioned that during his, give me one second. It's going to be during the, the general session at 9 a.m. on Wednesday says driving velocity to power your business with CEO Devin Wenig. So this will be my first time seeing Devin Wenig in person. Um, and I'm really curious to hear what he has to say. I'm going to see if I can re record the entire session as well. Like I said, I don't have 
specific clearance or permission to film like I wanted. And I understand why they didn't give it to me. I'm not stupid, okay? But I'm going to see what I'm allowed to do. I'm going to see how much I can record before anyone gives me any trouble. I, and, and plus, I'm going to be dressed apart, so hopefully I'll just look like I belong. I'll look like I'm part of uh, what's happening, which I guess is the best position that I can be in. You know, and maybe I can get away with it. So do you guys have any questions regarding eBay Open? If you haven't done so yet, uh, visit our Facebook group. I'll put the link up right now. All of the panels that I mentioned are available there. You can also go and directly view and print out the agenda from the link that's provided, and you can vote on which events you would like me to go to and when I go to them, okay? Uh, you, you may want to be conscientious. Maybe some of the events you really want me to go to, you'll pick the later time slots because the earlier time slots are going to be full. And it's I know already it's going to be slammed on Tuesday. It's going to be pretty busy on Wednesday. It's going to be almost... It's like going to be half size on Thursday because there's a lot of people that are going to be going who can't handle their alcohol. So I know some of the like the Thursday morning events are probably going to be the emptiest of all the events. So if there's something you really want to see, send me in on a Thursday morning. That's going to be your best bet. So that's where you should be fighting to place your votes. Donatello Bodolino says, seems like it's more of a networking party conference. Last year, lots of people were disappointed as well. I didn't go last year and not again this year. You know, that, that honest to God might be what it is. And if that is what it is, I'm going to make the absolute most of it. And uh, I, I've done a lot of things in preparation to make sure that uh, I'm going to be positioned to be able to network and market successfully. Because at the end of the day, if this show can receive additional funding, we can grow out of this space. We can improve our tech. We can do, we can do a lot more to be able to help people if other people are paying for it rather than having you guys pay for it. Because in a perfect world, 100% of my money would just come from people who just want me to mention their products from time to time. And then I can just produce all kinds of training videos until I get everything out of me. And uh, we can just have a great time from there. So uh, in a perfect world, I wouldn't need anyone's money to make this happen. Or any of your guys' money to make this happen. Moving on, though, guys. Hey, it's, it's, uh, it's mail call time. Uh, we had a lovely package get sent in from Mindy. Oh, and it's a fat boy. Look at this thing. It's a huge package. Mindy, I don't know if I'll be able to show everything that's in here while we're on air right now because I don't know what's in here or how, how densely packed everything is. But I just want to give you a million and one thank yous. And I want to let you guys know, too, we're not done with news for today. we got more stuff coming up. So if you're curious what's in the box, you know, you know stick around. we got more coming up. But if you want to take a, you know, a snack break, too, I won't, I won't hate you. Just, just, just keep it running in the background. Chris says, we'll be there. Looking forward to meeting you. I don't know who you are other than your green circle, but I look forward to meeting you too. And like I said, if you guys want to join me for dinner at Marrakech or wherever the place is called, by all means, let me know. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here. I'll put the link up there as well. Send us a message through Instagram so we know who's going to be attending. And we'll figure out the date and everything and get that all sorted out too. Uh, we're going to be posting like crazy to Instagram while I'm gone. So if you want pictures of the show floor and events and stuff like that, that's where you're going to want to go to see all the pictures. I probably won't have time to post to Facebook. Cool. I got a fabric screen. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this, but thank you for it. Here, let me switch over to this one so we can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, some complimentary bubble mailers. You know, I've never done this before. I've never used bubble mailers to pack stuff. Some, uh, it looks like some Tupperware stuff. Now, I can't remember what these things are. I have some of these still, but I still don't remember what they're for. Um, but she sent me three of those. Looks like we have a spreader here. Spreader, mixer, smasher, some type of multi-tool. A little uh, a little mini shaker. I think I still have the other one you sent me. Uh, a really nice looking spatula, which I'll probably use the heck out of. I probably won't let Daniel use it either. Oh my, did you send me a whole Tupperware set, Mindy? Ooh oh, and they're, they're my favorite color, too. I might even take some of this with me on the go. Because like I said, I can, only, I can only buy one $18 omelet right now. So I feel like a knob because I'm not able to get this thing open. It's a lovely little box. Oh, look how cute that is. There's more little, uh, little bits inside of there as well. Thank you so much, Mindy, for this. And there, there's a bunch of it, too. We'll open a few more here. Uh, 
three green lids. I'm four green lids. I'm assuming that the other bits for those are in here. Mindy, you're so sweet. And this already caught my eye. Look at this bad boy. I already know what this is. I've seen people at the swap meet selling these ones too, and these things aren't cheap. So those of you who don't know, I have a two-year plan, which includes me doing a cross-country tour uh, across America to have an opportunity to resell and buy and sell and all that stuff with pretty much everyone. And Mindy is definitely one of the stops I'm going to be making. She's been so hospitable. Uh, and her husband, he's been a wonderful guy, too. I got a chance to talk with him uh, on our private group. We had, we had Mindy actually jump into a video, a live stream that we did within our patron lounge, which is our back page online. So I look forward to meeting both of them. We're going to have an absolutely great time. Thank you so much for this one. This one, I already know how much this costs, but we're not going to talk about value. Have you guys ever done that before? Okay. I know you can relate. I know you can relate to what I'm going to say right now. Have you ever come across an item and thought it was so great and so amazing? And then you had one of two things happen when you looked it up. Either you look it up and you realize it was worthless and then it, it, it maybe didn't mean as much to you as a reseller. You're like, ah, well, yeah, I, I guess if I want another one, it's like $6. And you may have thought it was like a whole lot more because you valued it more. Or have you ever looked up an item thinking, you know, uh, that it was worthless and it was like, oh, yeah, no, it's cool. It's a nice little thing I'll put on my desk. Look it up. Turns out it's $100. And then you say, I can't keep this. I just can't do it. I've got to list it online. I've got to get rid of it. So... But so, sometimes with certain things, I'll just say, I can't look it up. I don't want to know. I, I know it's not cheap, but I'd rather, I'd rather keep it and enjoy it. That's what we did with the, uh, the figure over here. Did you see that bunny back there? That guy right there. I looked him up because I know the brand. I know the brand's an expensive brand. And it goes up to like $500 for some of those figures. And I go and look him up. He's like a $45, $50 figure. I'm like... I'm like, it's still really cool, but I'm not as blown away with it as I was a moment ago. There's a little white box inside of something. Well, maybe we will find it. She sent me one of these, too. I'm assuming the white box is important. And this has uh, some extra utensils. Uh, the, it has the fork and a little uh, side container. Mindy, what would, what would somebody place inside? Would it be for, like, sauce? Is that what would somebody place inside the side container that comes with it? This is a really nice set. I might actually take this with me tomorrow. I like the color scheme on it. Hey, and real quick plug, guys. Okay? If you didn't know this, Mindy Coy is one of the best Tupperware sellers around. She's gotten a couple of cars from doing it, and she still has a lot of Tupperware. So if you're looking for the older stuff, maybe you have a set that needs to be completed, or you want, like, the old Servalier, and you want a brand new set reach out to her. She also has the new stuff, too. Reach out to her, too. She has some great, great stuff on hand. Oh, salad dressing? Oh, yeah, this is so cute. Look at this. That just plops in over there. But, yeah, definitely reach out to her. She's got amazing stuff. Oh, that's savage. I love it. I'm going to butcher that, so we're just going gonna, gonna to demo it like this right now for you guys. I love how everyone's showing up once I start opening up Tupperware. So those of you who are just joining in right now, we did a full coverage. I found a little box. We did full coverage on uh, eBay Open. So if you want to rewind, you can go back and you can watch that. I really like this one too. We talked about every single panel and event and everything like that. And we're kind of uh, working our way into a next section. Mindy, this is heavy. Should I be nervous about opening this? Carlton Crystal, it says on the outside. Oh, that's cute. It says, congratulations. I can't get it out of the box, but thank you for that. I really like that. Let me see if it'll focus really quick. It might not focus. We might need to pull it back a little bit. But it says, congratulations across the front. Thank you so much for that. Very, very cool. We'll see if we can uh, squeak that out of the box and add it to the shelf of amazing things. But there's a handful more uh, Tupperware in here. We got a couple of shakers as well. These are bigger ones. I might. Oh yeah, I'll tell. Totally. Yeah. If you're not sure who I am, just look for the guy holding the giant pink shaker while I'm at uh, eBay Open. Thank you for that as well. But yeah, there's a, a handful of other pieces in here, Mindy. If there's anything else super priority you want me to open while I'm on air, let me know. She didn't even. She didn't even ask me to open this on air, but I told her I would. Oh, this one's nice too. Oh yeah. And there's another one. 
Another one. And if those of you who don't know, that's a that's a meme thing. Oh wow, I really like that. Thank you so much for this one, Mindy. Insulated tum tumbler. Oh, you want to see the? Oh yeah, the one that I just opened. Fantastico. Thank you to, to you for that, Mindy. And I'll I'll get everything laid out and put a nice picture up uh, online of all of that stuff as soon as I get a moment to uh, to do that. It may be uh, after eBay open. But we'll see. we'll see. We'll see how the day goes. Originally, I was set to leave tomorrow. Uh, but like I said, things, uh, you know, I, I pushed the trip back for some personal reasons. And then it also did uh, save some cost as well. So a little bit of a win-win. What is going on with this? Let's, what's going on with this? Guys, we have some really, really exciting news. I spent the last, uh, gosh, month on and off working with Sean Herrick, the owner of Prairie Grit. Now, those of you who don't know this, this channel is Patreon funded, which means that people who watch the program basically help support the show, keep us on air, help cover expenses and time because it's very time intensive and very expensive to run this program. We have struck an exclusive deal with them to be able to offer our patrons a free subscription to Prairie Grit, which is a site where you can sell stuff online. So I know a lot of people are using eBay and Amazon. You know, we have had people use Mercari, Bonanza, and, and other sites, but Prairie Grit's another site that you can sell on there as well. And I know there's been some reservations from people who say, well, I don't really want to, you know, put any money up up front to be able to sell on a platform because we do it with eBay, but we look at it differently. You know, we pay our listing fees and then on the back end, we pay our bill. Okay, that's how it's looked at. But on Prairie Grit, you run your listings, and then at the end of the month, they charge you for it, but you see the number up front. You know exactly how much you're paying. So if on eBay they said, hey, it's going to be uh, you know, $35 a month to list 100 items, which it essentially is, $0.35 cents an item. You know, it's going to be uh, you know, $35 to run 100 items. Um, you know, you, we're going to need that money from you. I don't know what it is, but people are a little more hesitant. Now, what's really great about Prairie Grid is they have insane search rank as well. But... We'll talk about that in a second. We worked out a deal with them where, like I said, all patrons are going to be able to get a fantastic, huge discount. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. I'm, I'm just going to cover up my face really quick so you can see what it is. So what's happening right now is if you are an existing patron of mine or you decide you want to sign up for Patreon, okay, you're going to receive the perk that includes free listings along with it. So we moved our $15 tier up to $20 as of recently, but now you're going to be able to get a free account with Prairie Grit where you're going to get 50 free listings a month, which is a $30 value. Now, if you are a $15 patron, I would super duper appreciate it if you tried out the $20 tier, especially now that we have this huge value for you. Do you have to? No, everyone's grandfathered into it. Now, if you're a $50 patron, which, like I said, it includes a lot of stuff beyond what we're just talking about right now, you're going to get the 100 listing package, which is a $40 value. And if you're a $100 patron, you're going to get the unlimited bit, uh, listings, which is, uh, or excuse me, the last one's a $40 value. This one's a $100 value. And this is all included just from being a patron with what we're doing right now. Landshark says, doing some work for Sean right now. That's fantastic. Yeah, you know, the more people to help Prairie Grit grow, the better. Because I think it's a great site. I think it's a great alternative for people who maybe don't want to just kind of stay within that specific bubble. So even on the $20 tier, which I already think is nuts, you get access to our group chat, which allows you to talk with me and all the other sellers. I think we have like 35 of them in there right now. You get access to our second page where we post up exclusive videos and training. You can get... Uh, uh, direct access to me if you have questions and stuff like that. You get your name show up in all of our credits. It's, it's pretty awesome. Now, I sell on Prairie Grit myself. Are my sales through the roof? No, okay? I move a couple of items a month, and it's stuff that's not really selling on eBay, and I get to use the eBay import tool, which lets me click a few things, and then all my listings come across from eBay straight into Prairie Grit. So, like I said, if you're an existing patron, this is yours for free right now. And if you haven't signed up yet, Now's a great time to sign up because you're going to be getting insane value along with it as well. And this will be free to you for the life of your patronage. Okay? So as long as you're a patron with us, you will get this perk included with your Patreon at no extra cost. Isn't that crazy? I think it's crazy. I think it's a huge deal. So if you haven't signed up yet, visit the link, patreon.com backslash Bolarama. Get this great perk. Once you create your account, send me a message. Give me your login email and show me a screenshot of your back end. If you want help making a banner, we'll even help you out with that as well. Cool. 
Thanks again to Prairie Grit for making this opportunity possible for sellers everywhere. What do we have up next on our next slide? Let's take a peek. I don't even know what's next right now. And I really wish this was working. There we go. The eBay uh, Q2 shareholder highlights. Let me resize this really quick, guys. Technology on the fly. So those of you who don't know, eBay had their shareholder uh, meeting. Hold on, let me make sure I got everything on that last one done correctly. Yes, so eBay had their shareholder meeting. It happened on Tuesday the 17th, I believe. And like I said, it was a very interesting call. It was the first time that I had gotten on a call and actually walked away with a bit of a smile on my face. I felt that there was really, really valuable information there. Now, if you wanna go back and listen to the call, just go to Google and type in eBay shareholder call, register yourself, and you can go and listen to the web presentation. It includes the slides with it as well. It's a good thing to pay attention to. Now, I understand there's going to be a lot of technical jargon that you might not understand, uh, but I would say just search as you're going through or come back here and listen to my breakdown on it. And if nothing else, listen to the Q&A because you can learn a lot of valuable information from that. Uh, I listen to every single one that comes out. This one was much longer than normal and it ran nearly one hour. So I have went ahead and take some notes of the highlights. I haven't had an opportunity to read over them as of yet. So uh, it says $89 million from promoted listings in Q2 alone. Let's not forget, eBay is attempting to make promoted listings a $1 billion, with a B, dollar a year brand for the company, which means we want, eBay wants to make $1 billion extra dollars off its existing sellers through promoted listings as of right now. And they're really making traction towards getting there. Last quarter, I believe their earnings were somewhere between 70 and $71 million for a single quarter. Now, they're not going to hit their goal for this year. It's simply not going to happen. And I don't see eBay Open acting as a catalyst to help them get there. <clears throat> so, to hear that the numbers are going up, though, certainly scares me because it's going to adjust the climate for sellers moving forward. You're either a promoted listing seller or you're not. And by not being, you're going to be at a disadvantage comparative to those who are. We still need more clarification on how promoted listings directly affect sellers, but as was seen earlier within our group last week, Jane Miller put up a post talking about how search was screwed up. eBay promoted listings is now interjecting listings in where they don't belong. So if you do a search for price plus shipping lowest first on red Nike shoes, you're going to see that a promoted listing can actually come out of place and really makes the entire search process an uglier one than it was already before. It frustrates me. On top of that, uh, GMV was flat for year over year, basically means that they aren't really showing much growth based on last year's number. GMV is gross merchandise volume, so things were uh, uh, pretty flat all in all. They've also announced now that they've gone from 4,500 up to 6,000 managed payment sellers. Like I said before, they're capped on the number of managed payment sellers that they can have based on a deal that was signed with PayPal at the time that they decided to part ways. Uh, on top of that, uh, they also recently made an acquisition with uh, Paytm Mall in India, and they made a 5.5% purchase into that brand, which I think is a smart play to try and get more reach within the Indian market. They've had a lot of trouble with integration into India in the past, having started before and then sold off a share you know, of their classified division. They've seen that the action that Flipkart and other brands have had there, and I don't blame them for trying again. Like we said uh, two weeks ago, India is rapidly becoming an emerging market that everyone needs to take notice of because we have billions of people coming to the internet for the very first time. And the prospect of being able to buy American goods from emerging markets is something that we've seen China do in the past with blue jeans. Who remembers those days when your old Levi's were worth $400 a pair simply because they were distressed and worn by somebody in America? We're going to see similar types of things happening with India. I think it's amazing that uh, eBay is working hard to establish a larger market share in that area. Uh, on top of this, though, there are some downsides, though, because we have to understand that the further that eBay reaches away from America, the less that they're going to need American sellers to really keep their bottom line where they want it to be, not only for themselves, but for shareholders as well. 
Uh, they attributed the lower than normal GMV due to the addition of sales tax. Now, when we had our shareholder call last time, the Q1 shareholder call, we only saw a handful of states actually have sales tax imposed. Where we're at right now, we're seeing somewhere in the mid-20, 20, 22, 23 states have already got their tax in place, and they said... We didn't expect this level of expansion to actually happen. We didn't think that that many states were going to take it up that quickly. And I'll tell you right now, the amount of laws coming into play that are going to be affecting sellers, I said it before and I'll say it again, this is the year that's going to define selling online for the next generation. Honestly, there's a lot that's happening right now. Um, they said that the sales tax increase had the biggest impact on high cost items. Doesn't surprise me. Why would I want to sell a 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar car online knowing that I'm going to have to impose a buyer with a sales tax, which I would have otherwise not had to with a private sale. I can assure you that there's people that are doing more and more to bring their transactions offline now than how it was before because there's a lot more motivation to do so. Not only did we see escalated rates for uh, fees in those specific categories, you know, a lot of the high ticket type stuff uh, went up in fees. Now we're looking at passing along the sales tax burden to the consumer as well, which doesn't surprise me that people are gonna want to step away. Aaron Clue says the only panel without Q&A is managed listings or managed payments rather. I think there's one with and one without. Uh, they're doing two different ones. So if you're somebody who's interested in it, you can ask questions. If you're somebody who's already been invited, then you can go and ask questions. It's a, it's very interesting how they've done that, but uh, good, uh, good catch on that, honestly. Uh, they said transaction revenue is at 5%. GMB and revenue caps grew uh, primarily due to promoted listings. Now, we saw this last time around on the Q1 shareholder call where promoted listings was pretty much the only thing that kept eBay profitable. They said GMB or gross merchandise volume was down, meaning that everyone as a whole sold less, yet eBay uh, as the standalone, we're not including StubHub, we're not including eBay Classify, we're saying eBay alone still managed to turn a profit. And what they said this time around, but in just a little bit of a fluffier sense, is that eBay would have lost money this quarter. We would have shown a strong reduction in uh, total revenue if it wasn't for promoted listings, is what they're saying right there. And they said they can attribute that to that. Here's one of the scary things, guys. Third-party ad spend is going down, 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 down. And what is third-party ad spend? That's where eBay spends money on Facebook ads, Instagram ads, print ads, uh, newspaper ads, uh, TV spots, uh, radio promotions, you name it. They say, hey, we're spending less money on it. And now we know why. And they, they, they said it in such a oh, sneaky way that really rubbed me wrong. And basically what they're saying is that we don't need to spend nearly as much on third party ads because our first party ad uh, set system is working so well. Why should eBay pay to put an ad in Facebook when you'll pay to put your own ad in Facebook? That's essentially what's happening. First party ads means me and you. It means us buying ads directly from eBay. We're doing it in the form of promoted listings currently. We give them a little extra money and that offsets the cost of running ads on our other items or running ads on everyone's items. So why would eBay spend their own money when they can spend your money instead? Okay, and this is this is what the, the rub is, and I've talked about this for a while now, is that, uh, that they're increasing their margins while delivering no benefit to the, to the actual seller. And that's been a long-standing concern for me. I have no problem with promoted listings if you can show me an applicable benefit over not having promoted listings. If you can show me that, if, if eBay even said, no, 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 we're gonna keep our third party ad spend the same, but we're gonna take our first party ad revenue and we're gonna add it on top because we understand that eBay is a dying e-commerce brand within the market. We understand that uh, brands like uh, Shopify and Amazon and Etsy are literally running circles around us right now, okay? And they even admitted this too. They said, we understand that our presence as an e-commerce brand, it's not exactly where we would like it to be. Why they're, why they're dialing it back instead of doubling down, it concerns me. Uh, I predicted last week when we talked about this as well, that the other 
uh, branches of the eBay umbrella were going to be doing just fine. Turns out I was right. Classifieds are, are up into the double digits, up a full 12%, which is huge because I think a lot of people don't realize how big eBay Classifieds is as a brand. It dwarfs the eBay company as a whole. This has to do with that acquisition of that German car company that I told you guys about uh, six months ago. Maybe a year ago. It was a long time ago. And I said, hey, this is going to be a big deal. They gobbled up a company. I think they spent somewhere in the area of 10 or $20 million buying up an eBay classified or buying up a classified car brand in Germany. And now it's been integrated into eBay. And they've seen a 12% growth in classified solely because of that. And they said also, and this, I, again, they phrased it very funny because it goes without saying that eBay is a very left-leaning company. And they said that the U.S. dollar strength greatly helped them uh, show higher levels of earnings. Uh, you know, you'll hear the phrase sometimes, they'll say uh, FX neutral, which basically refers to uh, when we offset currency exchange while we're talking about the valuations of a company. And the numbers are greatly skewed by the fact that the U.S. dollar is doing very strong comparative to a lot of other traditional, you know, gold level fiat currencies uh, around the world. So <clears throat> it's interesting to see that. <clears throat> Um, on top of that, we had a bunch of Q&A stuff. Let me look through my notes here real quick. They said that we're, we are where we are right now due to the internet sales tax. Uh, and then uh, they said that, again, we are doing okay because of increased margins due to reduced third-party ad spend. So they've admitted it. Like I said before, they aren't spending money on ads the way that they used to. And we're not talking about a little bit of a reduction. I believe the reduction is somewhere in the 90% range. Landshark says, we need to do a good test, Jay. Hit me up when you have some free time. I have some ideas on that. I have some ideas on that as well. Yeah, I, and I know exactly what you're, what you're getting at. You know, running some type of very hard line control, maybe on a fresh account, something to that effect. Uh, but, you know, I've even looked into all the variables. We would need to have an account located in the middle of America, an East Coast account, a West Coast account. We would need to have all of that because that would influence buyer decision. There's a lot of factors that go into it, but I would be up for doing it. It's just, it's a very expensive project. I don't think people realize it, it would probably cost upwards of $1,000 in product and labor to be able to run that experiment successfully. But it, it's been on my radar for sure. Uh, they said the internet sales tax, they said it's going to get worse before it gets better. Okay. Um, they, they understand fully that it's going to be something that's going to end up happening in all states. I would still love to see a reversal of the decision, a re-reversal of the South Dakota versus what is a Wayfair. I would love to see that flip back in favor of the general consumer because it goes without saying who this is really hurting. It's hurting small and medium-sized businesses the most. You know, when we look at large brands, large brands don't care. They've been charging sales tax for years now. You know, even when it wasn't necessary, you go to walmart.com, target.com, bestbuy.com, you're paying sales tax. It's just going to happen. Okay. So they don't care about it. Some medium sized companies, you know, even ones that are working their way to the large end of things, like, uh, I guess like B&H Photo would be a good one, Shock Top. You know, I mean, you have these brands that are really starting to scale. They don't have a problem charging sales tax because it's an established thing. Now, Joe Blow, who sells Pokemon cards out of his garage, is going to have a much harder time convincing his consumers that paying a sales tax is going to be an okay thing. They, now, here's a great thing. This is one of the things that really made me smile. They said, we will work to see about getting an exemption for small businesses. They said they're going to make a push on the federal level, and I believe them. I talked directly on the phone with Daryl from the S-Ban team the other day. This is true information. We are looking to get a federal exemption pushed to be able to protect smaller brands. Because, like I said, who's being affected the worst? It's large brands. And it's international brands that are being affected, too. When asked for some additional color regarding the changes to Google's algorithm, okay, they said that it had no material change as of now. Okay, I frankly don't believe this. More details will be coming out. I truly cannot wait to go. That's, that's, that's honest to God. The most exciting panel that I think I'm going to go to is the one where I have an opportunity to talk with Google executives about search. That is a huge deal. Okay. If you, here's the thing, guys, it's such a big deal that if you have other YouTubers that you enjoy watching who you know will be there, tell them to go to that panel. That is the most important panel of the entire event. And I feel everyone should get that information. Okay. Um,
And here's another thing, too. Okay, they talked about uh, just having a clear understanding of where they fall. And they said that they believe or they understand that they're falling right now below where e-commerce is as an average. eBay understands that it's, it's a company that is losing a bit of its relevancy. And especially with the rise or excuse me, especially with the with the changes in the climate for retail. They feel that they they have ground to make up. And I've never seen eBay admit this before, that they feel that they're below the bell curve of where e-commerce is currently. Aaron says, can you drop a link for the workshop so people can read up? It is available on our Facebook group currently. Visit uh, facebook.com backslash groups backslash Bolarama. And the link as well as all of the polls went active at 530. I, I scheduled 11 posts before the show. So just go and head on over there and you can see the entire agenda. And uh, I can't remember the name of that one. Let me make sure I get it right. Uh, it says workshop creating listings that show up on Google Shopping. That's going to be uh, the 4:30 p.m. block on July 24th. Aaron, are you going to go to eBay Open? Are you going to be there? You would you would be on my short list of people that I would like to meet. And I'm penning this one in. I I frankly don't care what everyone votes for on that one. I'm going to that event regardless. No disrespect to anyone else, but that that's a must attend event. And I know you guys. I know you guys won't won't be upset with me over that one. And and like I said, I hadn't read any of them before the show, so I didn't really know what was going on. Look at me looking so darn unprofessional. Let me sit up in my chair while I talk to you guys. Where are my manners? Okay. Um. The, now here's the thing that Wenig said when he was on the call. He said there's going to be exclusive discussions regarding ads and other seller perks at eBay Open. He specifically said the word ads, okay? And we mentioned this before. Uh, six months ago, four months ago, we talked about um, CPC ads, cost per click ads, which is different than what we have been using traditionally. Right now, uh, promoted listings on eBay, we pay eBay a fee when an item sells. Would you be willing to pay them in advance for them to push your item a little bit harder but have no guarantee that it'll sell? Okay. What is it worth to you as a consumer if you have a four pack of really nice Sharpies that you want to sell? And I said, I, I, I can show your listing to a thousand people, but it's going to cost you five dollars. You know, is it worth it? Where's your breaking point? So here's the thing that's tricky with uh, CPC advertising is that if you don't understand your market and you don't understand your uh I guess your cost of doing business and what you're willing to spend for your actual conversion or what your conversion rates actually are going to be, it's going to be very difficult to get people on board with that. You're going to see a lot of dissent from people who pay for advertising, who get no results, and then immediately call it a scam, okay, or, or, or say that they've been swindled or they've been had. You're going to have people calling in asking for refunds on their advertising because they just simply don't know how it works. It's going to be a very scary time for eBay, and they need to be very careful about how they roll it out. It needs to be, God, we need to be talked to like kids, okay, guys? And I know I'd say I hate it when eBay does that, but no disrespect to anyone. I've spent seven or eight years paying for advertising for different brands that I've owned. It is a very complex issue, and even to this day, I don't even feel fully equipped to be able to teach somebody else on how to do it. So that being said, eBay is going to have to make it very, very straightforward on how they plan to uh, pitch it to people. Uh, and then, like I said before, why would eBay pay for their own ads if we're willing to pay for it for them as well? Another interesting detail that they revealed, too, is that they said they have more millennials coming to the platform than ever before. It's the first time that they're really getting a good millennial push. And on top of that, they said it's mainly women that are coming to the platform. But the downside is, is that they're normal spend, the amount of money that they spend uh, per visit or, uh, you know, during their first month, their initial spend is much lower than the average consumer that comes to the platform. You wonder why? Well, us millennials don't have any damn money. Okay. Simply put, that's the reason. That's the secret sauce right there. Uh, but they said that the CLV, which is the customer's lifetime value is higher. Okay. 
Good thing. It means that they're sticking around. You know, it, it, and part of that probably has to do with human tendencies. When we know something works, we're uh, accustomed to continuing to use it. And most times people don't delete apps like that. If they went to a site once, it worked for them, and they have that, that button right there on their phone, and they can know they can click on it again and go to it and get something else, they're probably going to do that. So it's interesting to hear that they are tapping into a market that they've historically had trouble tapping into it before. It makes me also ask, is there something going on with other markets that are making it so... People don't want to do business there. I've said before that Amazon is a disgustingly ugly site, okay? I don't understand how they do so well. Their app isn't even pretty looking either. It's very industrial looking. It's very rugged looking. So maybe eBay's colorful platform is actually attracting that type of market to come across. Uh, and then they also said, this was another interesting thing. They said their third party marketing returned customers that were simply not worth it. They said they are removing low ROI third party advertising. So this even goes to show you that even a massive company like eBay didn't even get their own advertising right. Okay, so ROI is your return on investment. And again, your third party advertising is other companies that they're using. So they said they've gone through and they did an audit of the different brands that they were using. It could be, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Snap, wherever they were jamming their ads out. And they said, we're removing our lowest producing ones, the ones that are just simply not making as much money for what they're worth. And on top of that, the ones that had been bringing us some customers, those customers were garbage. So they were paying for very ineffective advertising at some point. We talked about this before when we talked about the Elliott management merge, or not merger, the Elliott management, when they purchased 4.5%, got a seat on the board, we said certain things are going to get changed. We're going to see a trimming of the fat, so to speak. We're going to see a reduction in just expenditures across the board. They're going to make the company leaner. This is something that the Elliott has been known for doing historically in the past. They're going to lean the company out, and we're seeing the direct effect of that right now. We're, we're seeing a company who has nearly a trillion dollars worth of assets on hand stepping into a company like eBay, which let's be honest, has been struggling for the last couple of years to really gain market share. They're stepping in and saying, hey, we're gonna do what we did for every other company. We're gonna do it for you and it's gonna help your company grow. And we're starting to see that. We're seeing it in the numbers. You know, When was the last time you saw a company show flat GMV during a shareholder call, lose 80 cents on the day, uh, in stock value, and then immediately bounce back the following day. So we saw a very quick market response, and then we saw it snap back, and you can expect growth. I'm going to go ahead and call it right now. We're probably going to see eBay creep up to, I'm going to say $46 a share, maybe $47 a share by Christmas Day. That's my prediction. I think that they're on the right track with what they're doing because they are really leaning out. When a company starts making more money, we just cross our fingers and hope that that works its way all the way down to us. Somebody write it down. I'm calling it right now. $47 a share by Christmas this year. Uh, on top of that, they also said, too, that their, uh, their affiliate and social channels and direct traffic, that they're working with all of those. Uh, when somebody had asked regarding eBay and Libra, and some of you guys kind of shook your head at me when I spent an hour talking about Libra and Facebook the other day, and I said, this is important. This is something that we need to talk about because eBay being a participant with Libra is something we need to keep our eye on. Devin Wenig shocked me, just completely blew my mind with the, with the, with the c command and understanding that he had for Bitcoin during that call. I mean, it's not like crazy off the radar, but I would have never expected Devin to understand what Bitcoin was. These are his words. He said that it offered improved security, improved transparency, Reduce settlement cost, which basically means returns and refunds. It's pegged to a fiat currency basket. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go back and watch the other one. Uh, potential to lower cost even further. We're talking transactional cost for doing business. Uh, because eBay wants to make their money, but if they can make their money and lower their cost at the same time, why not? You know, we've already seen technically a reduction of two from 2.9 to 2.75 going from PayPal to managed payment. But if we could go from 2.7 down to maybe something a little more enticing, like a 2.0 or a 2.2, I'm all for it. It just means more money in our pocket. <clears throat> and it says uh, participants and advocates on behalf of our customers. They, they, they're saying that we want to step up to the plate. We want to give our money because we believe in this. And remember what I told you. Each company that stepped up to the plate to be a part of Libra with Facebook spent $10 million. And they aren't 
they aren't being foolish, though. They say, we understand. There's a lot of red tape that we have to get through. There's a lot of things that are going on with the government, and we, we, we get that this might not take off, but we want to stand here and say we are advocates for what's happening. Mindy, head into bed. Must believe you. Yep. Have a great night. And thank you so much for that care package. Again, I really, really do appreciate it. And if you ever need anything, please don't be afraid to ask. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, those of you guys who are signing up for Prairie Grit, use my link. Okay. Um, I think it's Prairie. Pam, you got my link for Prairie Grit. Use, the, use my link to sign up so we can keep track of you. And if you're signing up and you don't want to be a patron, uh, just use my link as well, too. It definitely helps out. So, guys, that was the highlights regarding the shareholder call. Do we have any other slides today? Nope. That's our last slide, guys. We're going to be taking a look at some items. One more time, we want to thank our patrons again, Pam, Matthew, Ashley, Anna, and Joe, Allie, Lee, James, Brandy, Rob, as well as the rest of you guys. There's a whole bunch of you there on screen. But I would look ridiculous if I read everyone's names back to back right now. So those of you who don't know this, I have not been sourcing for over two weeks now. I've been showcasing actually probably closer to three weeks, and some of you guys thought I was crazy. I would never make it, but I'll tell you, I've made it. I have one last bin of items to show you. I haven't seen these items in a month. Okay, so we'll see what's in there and we'll have a good time with it. If you guys have any questions, please don't be afraid to leave them in the comments. This is one of your last chances to help us out with eBay Open. If you've sat back and you've thought to yourself, you're like, man, you know what? I'm a $15 patron, but I think I can go to 20 and I want to help Jay out with what he's doing tonight. It's a fantastic night to do that. And if you thought to yourself, man, God, this guy in his pink shirt, I really want to help him out and click that super chat button. Just, mm, just because I, I know. And I'll tell you, too, if you, you know, this is a confirmed fact. Those who super chat actually get a higher level of sales on their eBay store. That's complete bollocks, guys. Don't believe me. So let's take a look at the items that I got. Um, I have some nonsense stuff. I don't know why I bought these. I think I got these in quantities. These are plug-in refills, country spice. Some of these older scents are a little bit difficult to find. Uh, so you can get a few bucks on these. I paid a dollar for this. Uh, I think I think it's going to be 10 or 12 bucks on the back end. Bolarama question says, is, or from Pam, excuse me, to me, is news on Etsy lately? Yes, people are angry that their listings are not showing up in search, even though I talked about it last week about the changes that are happening. If you do not offer free shipping on your listings and you haven't used a combine and conquer method, you are going to get taken to Hose Town on Etsy. You must assimilate or your Etsy store will die. You have been warned. Okay. Third party sellers, uh, drop shippers, China sellers, uh, people who have uh, quantity goods. Uh, people who have uh, manufacturing, those who've already integrated their cost and they understand what it costs to do business and they can just move products at reduced cost versus you, your Etsy store will die if you do not assimilate to the new things that they're asking you to do. It's not like eBay where they're suggesting things, okay? You will not show up on search on the first page unless everyone else doesn't have free shipping as well. Everyone's going to get free shipping. It's going to happen. Adjust your stores or you will sink. Sorry to be so uh, so brash. Um, it's it's Pat the reseller says, I have not sourced in a week of the green, green room function. Cool. I didn't know you were part of green room. I'm, I'm always blown away by people who spend copious amounts of, of money for that. But uh, whatever, whatever works for anyone, I'll try not to disparage anything. I just feel it's very, very pricey. Um, do you put a packing slip in with your orders? I do not put a packing slip in with my orders. Great question, though. And I'll tell you why I don't. This actually smells really nice. I'm smelling it in my... The bottom actually just popped open right now. It smells delicious. I do not put a packing slip in with my orders because sometimes they're gifts. And I would hate for somebody to know that they had an item that was shipped very impersonally to them. And then there's a thing that tells exactly how much was paid. Um, you can risk getting a negative feedback because of it. I've seen it happen. So I'd like to avoid the headache. I only include packaging slips upon request. What I will do, though, what I will do is when my labels print out, it actually says the quantity and name of the item in very small print at the bottom. This helps assist those who are legally selling items to uh, sellers in other countries to circumvent uh, tariffs and fees and stuff like that. They'll, you'll get those messages that say, could you please include the item number and item name on your package? Da, 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 da. 
they're basically they're 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 scummy people who do that. But if somebody requests it, I'll print it out and I'll jam it in though. Yes, Pam, always do free shipping. Combine and conquer. If you're unaware of how to do it, uh, I'm talking to people other than Pam. Pam knows how to do it. If you're unaware of how to do it, go watch my video on how to price. It talks about how to do free shipping as well. Uh, you can do free shipping without costing yourself anything. Pat says, no, I'm not part of Green Room. I just went to the function to meet everyone. Didn't even know that was a thing. Was Is that the thing that was, uh, I saw a video with Riken. And he had this whole long old table, like a little banquet table in the back of some, what looked like a breakfast restaurant with a bunch of people lined up in there. Next item up, does not smell nearly as good as the last one. Voice activated wireless intercoms. This is something that I scanned on Amazon a while back, I'm sure. <clears throat> it's been so long, I don't know what anything's worth at this point. Hey, I sold another self-leveling device. You guys haven't seen those. Uh, we showed them on air last week, I believe, and I sold two of them today. I think I only have one more left, and that's sideline for Susan. Don't forget to pick that up for me next time you see me, Susan. I'm going to scan this on Amazon again right now because, like I said, it's, it's been far too long. Those of you who messaged me on Facebook during the show, I will get to you after the show, I promise. Yes, it is actually a good item. <laughs> I would buy this item. Uh, it's showing in a great scan-in price. It says $40 is what the rank is going to be on that. I apologize for the blur. I'm in photo mode on my camera. Rank is 600000 in home improvement, so it's not the strongest of ranks, but it's got enough reviews. It's got 45 reviews, putting it at just a little over three and a half stars. And for me, that's strong enough to go ahead and sell. The contents on that one might even be new, so I might be able to get away with murder and charge just a little bit more than the average. So apparently this doesn't work right, but I, I, you know, I met the guy and th this, I don't, I don't know if I would have bought it from him still if I knew what his garage looked like, but we ended up striking up a conversation regarding, I think CNC machines because he had a giant drafting table and we started talking. He sold me that vacuum for a dollar, which let's just be honest, parts alone, that little basket, I'm probably going to get 20 bucks for if I need to. And he said he couldn't fix it. He opens up his garage and it looks like a mechanic shop. And this garage was mind blowing. He had a 3d printer in there. He had a lathe, he had a, a bandsaw, he had all kinds of goodies. And when I realized, oh, and he also does uh, Arduino work and other things. And when I saw all that stuff, I'm like, he tried, probably tried to fix this vacuum and couldn't. So I may end up having to part. Yeah, it is a Dyson. Thank you, Pam. I may have to part that bad boy out, but I'm certainly going to give it my best go. It's going to be added to the pile of repair projects. I have a whole side pile and I repair everything, you know, across a four or five hour period on a single day. It just makes life a little bit easier for me. Um... I got a whole gob of video games, like just a stupid amount. The lady sold these to me for a dollar each. Uh, some of these aren't worth $10. Other ones are. Uh, Far Cry 3 is a heck of a game. If you haven't played that one yet, I strongly recommend you play it. My God, you feel like the, uh, the lead role of an action movie. It's absolutely amazing. And if you want something to play those on... We have an Xbox 360. Now, the lady who sold this to me, she says, I don't really know if it works or not, so I don't really want to charge that much. And when I looked at all the games, okay, now here's the thing, okay? You want to, you want to talk about making smart decisions, okay, when you're out there. And I, I always tell people, use your noggin when you're out there. Use your gut instinct to make smart decisions, okay? So how do I decide if this console works or not before I buy it? How do I get a good inclination if this console is going to be okay? Well... This little sticker right here, okay, is the first thing that kids peel off, okay? They see a sticker, got to peel a sticker. Find me a kid who isn't going to peel that thing off immediately. The next thing you can do is you can look inside of the grate, check for excess dust. Light dust is fine, excess dust is not fine. Thirdly, take a sniff, okay? Does it smell like smoke? Does it smell like roaches? Yes, roaches have a distinct smell. If you've ever been inside of a house that has roaches, guess what? Their stuff smells like roaches too. If it doesn't smell, you're on the right track still, okay? Then ask them. Like, you wouldn't happen to have the cords, would you? Okay? Somebody who cares about their stuff will keep their cords on hand. If they don't have cords, they probably don't care much about the console. Console probably doesn't work either. Now, 
obviously there's going to be exceptions. You've bought in a core console. We call these cores, okay? So if you ever hear me say that, I'm referring to just a console only. It's not specifically, this is an Xbox 360, but this is an Xbox 360 core. It's just a console. So you, you probably bought one at some point in time and it worked fine. You bought your own cords online, yada, yada, yada. Now, here's the thing, Sophia, okay? I know you don't peel your, your stickers off, okay? Because we're like that. We protect our goods. We respect our products. And that's what I'm talking about. You would be way more likely to gamble on a product that still has stickers on it than the ones that don't have stickers on it. And I ask them, like, hey, you got the cords? Okay. And mind you, I asked her, too. I'm like, hey, how much were you hoping to get for it? Because, again, we do not, we do not give numbers first, guys. Never, ever give numbers. How much were you hoping to get for it? Like I said, I don't know if it works, so I'll sell it to you as is. Just give me $5. Okay, we're kind of on the right track. There's a few ways to salvage this right now. Okay, do you got the cords by chance? She's like, actually, yeah, we do. And she hands over a power brick. This is a $20 plus power brick on its own. All day long. These things are getting harder and harder to come by because Microsoft doesn't make them anymore. Now, me being the smart little goober that I am, I know I can plug this into a wall, and if this light turns on and it's orange, that means that this power supply is going to work. It's going into standby mode. If it goes red, that means this power supply is dead. So I plug that in. I don't even plug it into the console. I'm that damn confident, okay? I still haven't even plugged it into the console. I don't even know if I have a power strip nearby, but... Yeah, and, and then here, one more thing. The seal on the back is intact, and the last chance you have to salvage money out of these, pop open the base, this comes off, check for a hard drive, okay? This one does not have a hard drive, but if you have like a 250 gig, a 500 gig, you can get anywhere between 20 to 40 bucks for those on their own as well. So I got a massive stack of games for about $10, and a console for five. I can't remember if I got a controller or not. I know the video cable's in there somewhere too. Whatever, it's free money. And I'll show you guys me testing that as well. Oh, she gave me this for free too. It's the battery charging station for it. I picked this one up someplace else. I think this is like a $20 game. It has a $20 tag on the back. I'm almost certain I paid two to three bucks for it. Uh, picked up a Pokemon Black. Uh, I, I, oh, I remember where I got this one. I paid 4 or $5 for this one at a yard sale. This one's really moving up right now, 25 to $35. Again, I, I had somebody get into a little bit with me trying to tell me that it, it, was, it was within Corey's group, believe it or not. This is the first time I got a little feisty on somebody because somebody had posted up an image showing Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver. And I, I believe somebody's like, somebody wants $30 for this. Is this a good deal? And the first comment was from some guy who said no and i'm like are you out of your gourd and these were complete in box with the outer box and everything and he's like no they're worthless and he posts up a screenshot showing a counterfeit copy of pokemon gold and it's like visibly counterfeit to me and i think it was like 15 dollars. he's like no he's gonna lose money and i'm like you do realize that's counterfeit and you have no idea what you're talking about and i posted up a screenshot showing an authentic one it's like 65 or 75 dollars for one of the games complete in box with the outer box i'm like dude you're, you're absolutely mental here's the real one so again be mindful of where you get your advice there's a lot of really bad people posing as resellers what do you what's the phrase uh a wolf in sheep's clothing i see it all over the internet all day long and this is why if you have a group i no longer follow your group i do not respond to any messages in any groups if you tag me in a post in another group i will not comment in that group if you need any help come to my group that's where i'm going to be because i just get myself in far too much trouble in other groups so feel, Pokemon games are always so expensive, even when used. If you need some deals on some, fire me a message. I'll take care of you, okay? I have a, I have a knack for finding good cheap games. You'll like this one. Yeah, I know you've played the heck out of this one. Yeah, no, no, nothing wrong with picking up a copy of Orange Box, especially, especially for a dollar. I mean, why not? And most of the games that I bought, I'm going to be honest with you, I'll be able to resell maybe two or three of them online, the rest of them going straight into my collection. They're games that I had sold before in the past that I have. I will always take another copy of Far Cry 3 and throw it in the shelf. Pokemon Gold is like 25, but yeah, excuse me. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, I was referring to uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver for the Nintendo DS. The original Pokemon Gold on the original Game Boy is around 25, as well as Pokemon Silver, with the standout being... Was it Crystal? 
gold, silver, crystal. Crystal, I think, is still pushing around the 40-ish dollar range last time I checked. And if you guys want a clinic on switching out Pokemon batteries, I can do that for you too. I got some nonsense. No one cares about this. You guys, you're not going to learn anything from me talking about routers. Oh, you guys, you remember that mouse? I think I posted it up online. I ended up making like 60 some odd dollars on that mouse. I ended up picking up another one. This is a, a Deluxe. I've never seen a wrist rest of this size. Look at this bad boy. My God. I could take a nap on this wrist rest. Thing's huge. Um, but it, it feels decent and it has the USB adapter with it, which is great. Guy sold it to me for two bucks. Didn't even look it up because worst case scenario, I'll use this thing for my other computer. This thing is proper decent. And it has three buttons on the, four, it has four buttons on the side. My, my other mouse has three uppers. This one has three uppers and one lower. Really nice. And then you can, uh, you can even adjust the wheel as well as far as pressure and sensitivity. Very nice mouse. No clue what it's worth, but good piece to pick up. And I guess part of why I'm even telling you guys this stuff is so that way you can maybe take away some tiny tidbits as far as things to look for. If you see a computer mouse and you know nothing about it, you can say, oh, it has a, sh it has a, a whole lot of buttons on it. Maybe I should consider getting it. I uh, picked up four DS games. The only one worth anything is Sonic Rush, as far as I know. I think it's worth about a tenner. It's probably going to get bundled with a console at some point. You know? you know what I can do with this? I just realized I needed a small case for holding SD cards for my trip. I am totally boosting this for my trip when I pack. We got four items left. Master backgammon. And I think a spider just fell right on me. Master backgammon. Uh, I don't remember why I bought it. I think it was filthy cheap. I can't remember how much it's worth. Google it. Sorry, it's late. I picked up three drawing boards. I was able to get these relatively cheap. Uh, the two on the back actually light up. This bottom one here is supposed to pair up with something. I want to say I spent anywhere between eight to ten dollars for all of them. I know one of them is worth around thirty dollars. I may even keep one for myself. I don't see these often. This again came from the guy who had the CNC machine and all that other stuff, as well as the very last item I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to scan this one in again. I'm getting stabbed by something. Oh my God. Guys, we are going to be wrapping up the show here soon. If you have any reseller-related questions, now is going to be your last chance to ask them. If you have any questions regarding eBay Open, now will be a great time to ask them as well. Now, you know what's really unfortunate is this doesn't have a... This doesn't have a scan-in price anymore. This is really cool. Um, and no, I will not build this, and no, I will not put this on the shelf of awesome. This is a Space Age Ant Habitat, and it uses some type of special gel, and you can fill it up with ants this side and the other. It has an LED base as well. So it's a really, really nice one. Uh, I paid, I want to say three or four dollars for this. If I remember correctly, the scan-in price when I originally looked it up was somewhere between 60 to a hundred dollars. I remember it really, really being up there on Amazon. Uh, go ahead and be that person who tells me it's thirty dollars on eBay. That's fine. But I know the Amazon scan-in price was absurd. Guys, what time is it? It's 6.45. Believe it or not, I still need to start packing tonight. This entire studio needs to be torn down, which sounds like an easy process. This mic, the cabling, the lights, the computer, the field recorder, all of my power, everything that's the light, that little light that you see back there that's lighting up the water, all of this needs to be torn down. So that way we can pack it up and take it with us. And no, I am not going to take the entire shelf, but I might bring a decoration or two with me. Uh, you know, it's been a, it's, it's been a very interesting journey to get to this point. Uh, you know, we started this show almost three years ago, and this is going to be our first time doing a big, big outing to be able to provide coverage for you. I really do hope that you guys, uh, take the time to tune in for the streams. They are both, um, mentally taxing and logistically difficult to be able to do some of the things that we're going to be doing. And th there is very good reason why other people before me haven't done it. It is not 
easy. And I promise to do my best and bring you some of the best coverage I can and record absolutely as much as possible, but I really won't understand the level of variables until I actually get there. Once I have a better beat on what's going on, we're going to proceed as best we can from there. And I'll be recording just other nonsense stuff too and trying to generate some vlogs out of it as well. It's going to be a good time. Guys, I didn't schedule or plan anything to talk about this week. Uh, you know, last week we talked about, what did we talk about? We talked about your circle of influence and your circle of control. Man, what are we going to talk about this week, guys? So this has been an interesting week. Uh, those of you who follow me closely on social media know some of the things that I have been experiencing and going through this week. A uh, lot of challenges and a lot of discoveries. And I guess one of the best things that I, I've taken away from this week is a renewed perspective on who I am as a person. I've come to learn that most people, damn near all people, cannot take critique. Even when the critique can be very, very mild, it's not just a matter of how things are said, but it can just be difficult overall for anyone to crit take critique. And now I'm not speaking from my own personal perspective. I've had obvious struggles with it, just like everyone else. But I saw a really interesting quote that stuck out to me, and I even posted it online, and it said, never take critique from somebody that you wouldn't take advice from. Okay, and basically meaning that, you know, the people that you trust in, that you're willing to take this softball attack from to become a better person, that person is coming from a place of mindfulness or a place of concern or a place of well-wish. When you hear critique, try not to be too defensive about it. I was told this week that I am a bit of a perfectionist, that I can be overly particular about things. And I had never really stopped and thought about it that way. And it was because I had done a very specific thing here at the house. And somebody says, you know, you realize you're, you're very particular about things. And, I, and it, it had dawned on me right then. <clears throat> I go around and I tell people that I'm very chill and I'm very relaxed and that things are very easy going. But the reality is there's a lot of things. And thank you to, uh, to the person who moved their like over to dislike right now. You know, I, I'm very particular about some of these things in life because I feel that it can improve my process. I guess that's one of the best way to do it or best way to say it about what I do. But I'd like to think that the endless pursuit of perfection will eventually pay off. There's little things that I've done, like designing these, this is the first time we've ever shown these on air, designing these really, really nice promotional flyers for eBay Open. And these are gonna give me an opportunity to one, be able to interact on a higher level with some of the people that I meet. And yes, these actually have a red spine on them as well. These were th these took four to six hours for me to design one day. Okay, And we're going to be passing those out for people who are curious about the show. It'll give me an opportunity to do better networking. It's going to give me better presence at the events that I'm going to be at. It's just the little details. And I always say minutia matters. But I guess at a certain point, too many details can be a bad thing. It can be a bit of... A bit overwhelming. And I've even had people tell me that, you know, they enjoy the show, but sometimes when I get into GMV, Y over Y, FX neutral, I start hammering out stuff regarding stocks in the market that it's just of it's just too much for some people. And I get that. So I'm gonna strive and work to try and find a better middle ground for myself where I can let go of some of the details because the overall picture is going to be just fine. Everything will be all right. I'm going to work on that, but I'll tell you, the amount of details that I've prepped myself for for Vegas would probably make some of you very nervous. I know where I'm staying. I know how to get to the parking garage. I know exactly how much it is per night. I know who I need to speak to to upgrade the internet at the hotel. I've prepared an extra 50 feet worth of Cat6 cable, 50 feet worth of extension power, uh, 50 feet worth of extension cable for my camera. Uh, backup batteries, backup cables, extra XLR cables, extra backup microphone. I think I might have gotten a little bit too particular. But, I don't know. Is it better to be over-prepared than under-prepared? I think it might be best just to find that middle line. That being said, guys, this has been the Sunday Reseller Roundup for June, excuse me, I wish it was June, 
July 21st, 2019. Thank you so much again to everyone who was here today. Special thank you to those of you who donated to the show tonight. We got Red Neckerson Resales for $222 and we had Ursula for $18. Looks like Dan, the CNC man, just dropped a $1.99 super chat as well, saying, have a good time. Thank you very much, my friend. If you are going to make it out there, I do hope to see you. Uh, as always, guys, if you feel like extending the discussion, don't be afraid to reach out to me this evening. I'll be happy to talk with any and all of you. And those of you who are going to be at eBay Open, thank you for taking the time to want to see me. You know who you are, and I do appreciate it. It's a little weird. I never thought that I would be the type of person that somebody would want to go out of their way to meet, but I am flattered and honored that you are going to spend some of your valuable time there with me. Again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you don't make that money, someone else will. Have a wonderful evening. Man, oh man, was that a heck of a show that we just had. And uh, I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, Jay, you were uh, just here a second ago. You said you were going to roll the outro and we're still talking. Why are we, why are we still talking if you said you were going to do the outro? Because whew, this is the outro. And you didn't even realize it. Yeah, I know. Things don't always seem as they appear, but I thought I would make a little gaff of it, have a little bit of fun. So just like with the last one, 10 revisions. This is number nine of 10 that you're going to be seeing over the next 10 weeks. We've been doing this forever now. So I guess we'll start out as always and say thank you to our uh, base level patrons. Thank you to all of you for supporting the show for so long. Some of you guys have been around forever. I truly appreciate that. And then I also want to give a thank you to our uh, premium level patrons. Those of you who have been contributing even more to help keep us on air. Thank you to all of you as well and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult obviously there's no green screen but we're gonna have a whole lot of fun with this and lastly we have our premium tier patrons which we i don't think we have any as of now well if if we do place some right there but i don't think we do so thank you so much for watching and just remember your guys's continued support is what keeps me on air and keeps me working hard and keeps me digging up the truth so that way we can uh, all grow smarter and financially proficient together that's about it. Have a great day. Oh yeah, 100%, 100%, completely, yep, yep, no, I told him the same thing, I told him. I'm like, just because you think it works, doesn't mean that it actually works. Oh yeah, no, 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 I'm totally aware, I'm totally aware, has a huge subscriber base, plenty of people watch his content, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's just the state of YouTube right now, you can't, you can't run around just making up stuff and telling people that it works. It's, you know, it's 2019. You have to be able to provide some type of evidence or proof for what you're saying. Otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of smoke and mirrors.
Come with me, my fellow compatriots. It's time we rise up and overthrow our oppressor. The time to break free and seek freedom is now. The days of our voice being silenced will soon come to an end. We will be heard by any means necessary.